I, I love the premise of the show. Smart people talking about dumb shit. I think it's dumb people talking about, about smart, smart shit. Oh, we go where we not supposed to go, baby. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes and all websites are optimized for mobile. And it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag and drop tools to make it your own. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase. Let's start the show. Our guest today is a legendary journalist and media personality, has interviewed the likes of Boosie the Little Baby, Nick Cannon to Orlando Brown, DC Young Fly the Soldier Boy. He started off his career as a DJ, has directed critically acclaimed documentaries like Ghost Ride the Whip, has appeared on episodes of Love and Hip Hop New York in Atlanta, and has released the rap phenomenon mixtape series on VladTV.com. He is best known for his interviews on his YouTube channel, Vlad TV, which has earned over Four. Oh, they disrespected you, Vlad. They got a number up there that I know that's not right. They got one million, well over five million subscribers. Five hey. million. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, DJ Vlad is here. What's up? What's, what's up? up what's guy? up? What's up? What's happening? How y'all feeling, man? Well, like we're reuniting for the first time. This is the first time the three of us have been in a room together probably like five years. That's so crazy. It don't feel like that. Yeah. I guess because with modern technology with the Zooms and the phone calls and Yeah, I think social else. media makes you feel closer. <laughs> Than you actually are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As long as you like seeing people pop up, you're like, okay, they're still alive. Like yeah. everything's good. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, did we all do a pod before? I don't even remember that. No, no. We've I, never I mean, done, I've done one. it with you. Yeah, I've done with you individually. Yeah, but no, I don't think we've yeah. all gotten in a room together. No, I've like, never been yeah, on Brilliant yeah, We've never been. No, I've never been. It's my first time. Wow. Yeah. yeah I've done Breakfast Club a bunch of times. Yeah. But yeah, first time. Well, happy to have you, man. Thank you for having me. Happy to have you, man. Um, how was everybody's week? Good. Good. I'm ready to go. I got my honeymoon, bro. Tomorrow. I'm I'm going. You out. By the time this comes out, I'm in Italy, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Fingers yeah, crossed. Yeah. Fingers crossed. By the way, next week we won't be here. Might as well let y'all know that now because Schultz will be in uh, Italy for his honeymoon. I'll be out of the country as well. Where you going? I don't like to say, but I'll be <laughs> out. <laughs> no. It's not vacation. I'm going for work. But oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's for work. It's for it's it's for work. But I'll be I'll be gone for like, go like I'll be going all next week. Go like this. But it is. I'm probably dirty as fuck, man. Why? I ain't washing like two days. No, we'll see. Why not? I took, I took a shower last night. That's First good. of all, I would like to say, what's, what's y'all airline of choice? Uh, it's JetBlue. Delta, baby. I love JetBlue. Delta's my number two. Delta, I say this with the utmost respect because I have uh, two upcoming Delta flights that I know of for the rest of the year. Speak on it. Y'all suck right Speak now. Speak on oh. it. What happened? But Delta is moving like Spirit Airlines. Out. What Ooh, happened? They are. What? Wait, why? What happened? Because they just cancel your flights for no reason. Mm. Oh, yeah. Don't give you no explanation whatsoever. Mm. So I was in Dallas this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that leg of the trip was fine. Made it to Dallas. Uh, celebrated the 65th birthday of the good brother Bishop T.D. Jakes. Oh, it was phenomenal. So, you know, he had a birthday celebration on Saturday. And we went to church service on Sunday. Four o'clock, we supposed to fly out of Dallas, get to the airport. Uh, flight is delayed, gets delayed again. Then they just cancel it. No reason for the cancellation, no nothing. Was just the flight full? This is my little conspiracy theory with, with flights. I don't know if the flight was full or not. I think they're canceling flights that are empty so they don't have to pay for the, for gas. the trip. Yeah. Oh, mm. they told us it was a mechanical issue. They said it was the air condition. Right? So then they delayed it twice. Open a window. Then no. they canceled it. <laughs> <laughs> then they was like, yo, we're going to put you on American because I guess they like sister airlines or whatever, whatever. So I took an air American flight into Burbank. Mm. Got to Burbank, didn't have no luggage. No. So it's just like, didn't have no luggage. But till, it didn't get the luggage back till last night. <laughs> we got back to the airport. What were you going to do without the same sweatsuit over and over again? <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how are you going to manage for multiple days? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was, right? Yeah. And the only reason I cared, by the way, the only reason I cared because I had to shoot something on Monday. Can so we... I had my clothes with me. Ah. And then, you know, they provided some wardrobe. But you're right. I've been wearing the same sweatsuit since Friday. Well, that's right. You took the red eye to be here now. Yeah. Ah, mm. that's... You see? know what I mean? Glad. But Delta, step it up, bro. We don't expect that from y'all. Shout out to Delta. You guys are great. Can't no, wait to not. fly with you guys tomorrow. Not right now. They're going through something. They're going through some challenges. You guys are going to get a great by tomorrow. No, I, I feel, hope so. Uh, for my honeymoon. So I just hope, everybody yo, you, enjoy. You, by the way, you yeah. better pray. 
Yeah, that's what, come on now. What else, come on now. What, 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 what are we doing now? What are we doing all those people in Delta getting their flights canceled? It was their birthday weekends and shit like that. But, but why are we putting this energy out? I'm just saying it's possible. What are you doing right now? Remember when you had something on your lip and everybody was going to laugh at you and I said, hey, take that off your lip because I cared about you. And now you're putting, now you're putting all this energy out like I'm going to be I, fucked hey, up. Man, I just want Delta to do better. That's all. Me too. Y- y'all are not Spirit Airlines. Okay. You want to know something wild about airlines? Spirit. This is what? <laughs> <laughs> this is something wild about airlines. And, and this is coming from me, so it's kind of rare. But something I think is pretty sexist. Talk to me. The flight attendants have to wear heels. Really? Isn't that walking up and down the plane? No, once they're on the plane during service, they can switch into like a flat like to walk. Flat. Yeah, it was. but as part of their job. They have to wear a heel, and the whole point of a heel is to, like, accentuate the muscles in your legs and, like, stick out your ass and completely sexualize you. I know it's crazy that I'm making this statement about Delta, like, I, you know, but I just feel like if, of all the things we could call sexist and stuff, like, mandating that your female employees only have to show up in heels, that's, that's not hot. weird. I mean, I didn't know that. That's, that's feeding into the sexy stewardess stereotype, I guess. That shit is long gone, bro. Yeah. Do so, do, uh, do. <laughs> I, I haven't, yo, that shit is long gone. I haven't seen a female stewardess in forever, dude. I haven't looked. It's I'm all right. guys. It is all that's guys. That's true. all guys. That, that's not true. Oh, y'all that's don't, oh, y'all don't fly first class? Y'all don't fly first class? <laughs> y'all don't know. It usually is all guys. <laughs> they keep the ladies in the back, bro. No, I'm not like, I, I, <laughs> you know, the it does gays like are up front, no, baby. It does, it does. Not, it does. not JetBlue. JetBlue got a lot of ladies. I love JetBlue. Yeah, that's, my, that's my airline of choice. JetBlue Mint is the shit. No, it's great. If you got, you know, if you're broke and you're trying to look rich, JetBlue's the shit. No, you're crazy. JetBlue most sick. <laughs> I'm, just joking. I mean, I'm, I'm a problem most sick member. Yeah, Je- Je- JetBlue, Mint, JetBlue, JetBlue Mint. Mint is the best New York to LA right. that yeah. you can get. Exactly. It's yeah. not all, even all close. Yeah. It's all not even close. Yeah. It's yeah. not even close. Yep. The live flat, the food is crazy. Yeah, the live flat, exactly. Live flat, but also it's the food. They have like legit. Delta might have better food, food bro. Not than, uh, in my opinion, not than JetBlue. Okay. Because JetBlue gives you that menu and you think you have all these choices. Yeah, Delta will come to you with a piece of paper and they're like, this is what you're restaurant. eating. Yeah, they'd be like, we don't have no more of this. They'd be like, they'd be like, we only had two of this. Yo, and we and gave then they snitch on them. They'd be like, nah, he got he the got last it. one. Yeah, he got the last one. Exactly. And they're like, why are you, why you pointing me out? Like, we didn't want the same fucking thing. <laughs> and they, yeah, they did that. I thought that was weird. So they came to me and my wife. They was like, yeah, we have... These two options. Well, actually, we only have one left for this and one left for that. So because we was both like, well, we want this. And they was like, well, we only have one of this and it's one like, of that. You knew how many of us were going to be on this flight? Yeah, man. Yeah. I just want Delta to get it together. That's all I'm saying. That's it. But so, they will by Wednesday. I pray so. I hope they get it. I got to fly Delta again next week. Say again? No, because they said it was Americans' fault. That's the other reason oh, I'm wow. mad. They told me it was Americans' fault, but I'm like, American didn't cancel the flights. Y'all did. Mm. They just shrugged their shoulders like, ugh. That's what, that's the spirit airline. Is it annoying when people just like blame America for everything, you know? <laughs> nah, Americans, they should get a lot of blame. You, you, got, you got a proud <laughs> Russian right here. Proud Russian? Yeah, I mean... You're not it even was, Russian. You're it USSR. Was, it was, well, it was, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not from it, Russia. Yeah, you're right. You, like, you're, you, you're, you you're have actually, no you're connection you're to you're Russia whatsoever. Break that down you're for actually, us. I don't know yeah, what you're talking about. If you were born there, you were not well, born in Russia. Well, I was born in the Ukraine. I was born in Kiev. Oh, the at the time, Russian, it, in, this, that's what he's saying. At the time, it was the USSR. It was okay? the capital, right? At one point, yeah. Before Moscow. Yeah, Kiev was actually the capital. Moscow's a fake capital. They just invented that shit. They just invented this shit. Yeah, but... Back in the, but that's why Ukraine is important, right? Because Kiev yeah. is like used to be the capital of Russia. Mother Russia. Like that's yeah. where it all So yeah, when I was born there, it was part of Russia technically. It was the USSR. So I've always said I was Russian. Years later it became independent, it became Ukraine. But it's like, you know, I never considered myself Ukrainian necessarily because yeah. it was part of Russia at the time. Yeah. You're ethnically Russian like most people in Ukraine are. Exactly. So what, it's not cool to represent Ukraine or something? Or? I mean, I do represent Ukraine now. There's a Ukrainian flag, like, in my Twitter bio and stuff like that. Gotcha. I, I support the war Stay in well. Ukraine. <laughs> but at the time, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's just say you've been, <clears throat> you know, American your whole life. And at one point, whatever state you grew up in became part of Jamaica or something. You know, yeah. you still consider yourself American, not Jamaican, even though technically South Carolina was part of Jamaica now. Like, you yeah, see what I'm I saying? It's kind of like that. It's a weird situation. And you actually lived there, though, right? I was born. I was five years old when I moved. Wow. Have you been back to the Ukraine? Not to Ukraine. I've been back to Moscow and St. Petersburg. Oh. Yeah. Probably you know, probably can't go back anymore. Yeah. Said a few things that oh, that, Putin uh, probably doesn't like. Yeah, the 
I had an article uh, in Variety magazine where they started out with my comments about <laughs> what I thought about the Ukraine and Russia. So I probably, oh, really? I probably don't want to go back to Russia anytime soon. But what do you think about the Ukraine and Russian war? Is it, I mean, is it still it's still a war, right? Yeah. I mean, you can't tell because of the media. The media just... Absolutely. They moved on to something they else. Moved, exactly. Monkey pox. Monkey pox. They moved on to like five different things. Yeah. It's fucked up. Yeah. It's, it's Russia trying to take back something that isn't theirs anymore. Yep. You know? And he finally admitted that last week. He was like, yo, it's all about the land. Yeah, of course it yeah. is. They're about to come for Sweden, too. They said something about that. You think so? I don't know. He, like, mentioned something, right? Yeah. Well, Sweden, <laughs> Sweden joined. Uh, Sweden joined NATO. Said, Get them! Remember they locked Al they up locked in Sweden Alex for up. a month. Jesus Christ, Alex! <laughs> you know uh, Sweden joined NATO, I think, and that's that's what the. But they're trying is. to. That's, they're trying to yeah, join NATO, yeah. so that's what Russia doesn't like. You got family there still? Not that I know. Or right. everyone that I knew moved out of Russia eventually, or mm -hmm. out of Ukraine eventually. You know, some some well, some of us moved to America. A few, like my my father's sister's family moved, like I think Germany. And then, like, I don't know anyone who's still there. So. so you went from Ukraine to Oakland? I went from Ukraine to, to Massachusetts to the Bay Area. And that's pretty much where I grew up. And then, you know. Bro, you got to go back to the Ukraine, man. When this war is over. Ukraine yeah. is fire. Kiev is... Well, you been there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Kiev is fucking dope. Really? One really? of the coolest cities I've ever been to. Really? Unbelievable. You shouldn't be able to go to war with cool cities. Son. I, we were there when there was a war. Huh? There was another war happening like the eastern part of the country. This is back, I think, when they were like annexing maybe Crimea. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think that's that's what it. And like the people was just, they, I guess they're mm. accustomed to conflict because people were going out, they're partying, they're eating dinner at restaurants, everything like that. I mean, it was amazing. That's when I went with Jamil, you know, my boy Jamil. Yeah. And they thought he was Will I Am. People really? was just stopping him in the street. I got the feeling <laughs> tonight going to be a good night. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. It was amazing, bro. They just there's no black people there, and then the uh, one guy shows up. It's a little, I've got the feeling. Oh, so there's no black people in Ukraine? Nah. Nah. Wow. Nah. That, 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 that's the whole thing of like what people are like when you think of like racism. It's like my family came from a place where there were just no black people you know you know what i'm saying like once they got to america that really but no like probably very few asian people mm -hmm. no spanish you know hispanic people at all like it was really just all just yeah. white you know what i'm saying yeah. so it was a very you know different kind of thing you know i mean in terms of like how i grew up it wasn't like an american white family it was like a immigrant white family so what do you think when you first saw black people well i was five so gotcha. I grew up with, you know, the first school I went to in Massachusetts, like I lived in Springfield, Massachusetts. Oh, wow. Okay. So okay. that's like, a, you know, there's a large black population. So it was like, boom, like from kindergarten or something. So when did you, everybody. let me ask you a question that they asked on Brown Sugar Vlad TV. When did they, when did you first fall in love with hip hop? Um, elementary school, fifth grade. Uh, Breakdancing had just become uh, a national phenomenon. You know, the New York City Breakers. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> when the movie started to come out, uh, Breaking, Beat Street. And it was just like, you know, you couldn't really buy, there was no hip hop on the radio. You'd have to go to like warehouse records and buy a, a hip hop record and hope that it was good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I just started, you know, I started break dancing and listening to hip hop at that time. And it was like, it was just a, a ride I never got Wait, off. you can break dance? I mean, I, before I could, <laughs> you know, at, <laughs> at my current age, I'd probably hurt myself pretty badly. But, but can you like, videos? can you pop yeah. and lock or anything like that? A little that? bit. A little bit. Yo, you got to start doing that, Vlad. Vlad, you got to start doing that. Come on. Do you know they call I'm you a do. culture vulture, say so you culture appropriate. You <laughs> say, my business is to be kidding. Get it. Hey, hey, hey. Start hopping on them, Vlad. Come on, dude. You can't hit a little one right now? Nah. Do you want to battle? We could battle. We could battle? I'll battle you right now, bro. I got, you know what I mean? I got a feeling. That's the thing, though, but I think that this generation doesn't understand your hip-hop pedigree. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, they think you're somebody who just started doing, you know, Vlad TV, and that's where it started for you in this. You yeah. know what I mean? But yeah. I didn't even know about the breakdancing thing, but I remember back in, like, the early 2000s, some of my first national looks as a personality were on those beef... The beef... The beef, the beef uh, DVDs you were beef doing. DVD, the mixtapes, mm -hmm. essentially. Yeah, I put you and Buffy the Body Arguing with each other on the radio mm -hmm. on one of the beef DVDs. 
And I remember uh, we, we talked on the phone yeah. around that time. Because that was big. Like, you know, you got to think that was before the internet. So, mm. you know, you might have had, like, all hip-hop. You might have had, like, yeah. SOHH. So DVDs were everything. The mixtapes were everything. So mm-hmm. to get a, a prominent look on a national mixtape like that was, like, huge. Mm. You know? And that's that's when I first started hearing about Black TV. Then I, you know... DJ Vlad at the time. DJ Vlad at the yeah. time. Then I started paying attention, and it was like, you know... You did the documentaries on Oakland with about Mac Dre, who yeah. I never even I never even the knew Ghost, about Mac Dre. Ghost Ride the Whip, yeah, yep. the hyphy the hyphy movement documentary. The day did the American Gangster uh, on Mac Dre and the Romper and Gang. Yep, oh. yep. So I mean, it's stuff like that that I feel like if people knew, they wouldn't criticize you so harshly. Well, and I've always like, and you could talk to anyone about this in our space. Like I've always seen up and coming talent, and I've always embraced them. You know what I mean? Like, like I said, like when I heard you, I'm like, oh, Charlemagne's dope. I never heard about him before. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to put him on this mixtape. Adam 22, Academics, uh, Sean Cotton, you know, from uh, Say Cheese TV. Like all these guys, I reached out to him early, put him on my platform and was like, you know what I mean? Because when I was coming up, I just got hated on. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Source wasn't fucking with me. Double XL wasn't fucking with me. Hot 97, you know, like none of the radio stations or anything were, were trying to really, you know what I mean? What, what do you mean? When you first started doing the mixtapes? Well, just period. Okay. You know, whether mixtapes or when I started doing Vlad TV, when Vlad TV started to become a real entity, I, I reached out. Like, I had meetings at Double XL and stuff like that that went fucking nowhere. You know what I'm saying? They, 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 yeah, they didn't believe in it. They, they didn't believe in it, and they didn't even want to, like, really associate with it, you know? And they were like, I was like, yo, you guys are really kind of behind the ball here. Like, this print shit is really going away. They were like, oh, no, we, we, we don't need your help. We don't know what we're doing. It's like, yo, that's wild that when you think about all of those institutions, none of them yeah. evolved into the digital age. Yeah, the sources, mm-hmm. a rap. None of them. Ozone magazine rap. Yeah, man. Ozone was you know, I, you know, Ozone is the one that bothers me the most because you know I used to write for Ozone with the chin check. Duval used to do a uh, uh, Duval used to do something in Ozone. I forgot what Duval's segment was called, but they had the their fake Ju, salute to Julia Beverly. She had her fingers on the pulse of everything that was coming out of the South. The South, yeah. So they could have been the first world star, the first Vlad TV, yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Never transition. Why do you think Our that friend. is? And how did you have the 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 the, the <clears throat> wherewithal to know this is where the game was going? I think that you know, like before, you know, before Vlad TV and the whole DJ career, uh, I went to school at UC Berkeley. And I was a computer science major, and I worked at like Intel. And I didn't know you, you went know. to Berkeley. Yeah, you're a smart one. Yeah, you could be a spy. Yeah. <laughs> you could be a spy. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yeah, you know how they always Is say the feds. He might not be the feds. He might be working for Putin, bro. No. <laughs> I mean, if I was working for Putin, I would put out an article in Variety saying he's an asshole. <laughs> you know what I mean? This this guy could be a spy, bro. This a is Russian genius. Spy. I'm a Russian spy. That's a new one. I haven't heard that one yet. Yeah, right, that's, that's, way that than, that's way better. That's better than the feds. Yeah, yeah, feds. Yeah. Everybody's the feds, right? <laughs> this is yo working for Putin, bro. This is good. It's true. Tied we got to the Trump conspiracy and, also. Yeah, like, like, you, really, you, you got the really P takes, dog. You, you need to get Trump on Vlad. That would be fucking. That'd be kind of ill, wouldn't it? Hell yeah. We'll see. So you think you got it? So he got to get Trump on. He would, I think Trump would do Vlad TV. Yeah. Because he's all about the numbers. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, he's all about the numbers. But but to answer your question, like, yeah. I was a computer programmer for a little bit. And, I mean, but I studied in school. Like, I majored in it. So, it was like, I approached Vlad TV as a as much of a technology company as I did a, a content company. So, the back end of, you know, I spent millions of dollars over the years. You know, me and my programmer were building this whole back end of how, to, how can we really function and put out a large amount of daily content with a small staff. And that was where the technology in the back end, like I me mean, right now, we put out 10 new clips a day, plus two flashbacks and all and full interviews on certain days. Every so day? Every day. Damn. 365 days a year, holidays, weekends, wow. birthdays, <laughs> you know, whatever else. And to create that, that amount of content requires a, a system that could facilitate that and where people aren't stepping on each other's toes and, uploading the wrong thing and everything else like that. So approaching it like a, like a dot com, you could say, along with the content company, allowed us to sort of grow in ways that I think other similar companies could not. Mm. 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 What was your childhood like? My childhood like? Um, well, you, you got to understand. Uh, first, I was in Massachusetts, Springfield, Massachusetts. I was a little kid. And we were around kind of a Russian community and everything else like that. My relatives were around and so forth. My parents went and moved 
to San Mateo, California, mm -hmm. right? They bought a house, you know, their first house, and they, you know, this is where they settled. I was down the street from my, uh, you know, elementary school. But now I'm this kid named Vlad in the 80s with no Russian kids anywhere, no Russian families, no Russian anything. This is like in the whole school. War. And this is in the middle of the Cold War. You're the bad guy in every I'm, movie. I'm the bad guy in, in every movie. And I'm like, right? Like in every movie in the 80s, there was yeah, a guy named Red Vlad. Dawn. You know every I mean? movie. Like, <laughs> yeah. War games, like whatever else. So it's yeah, like. You root for in Rocky IV. <laughs> Rocky. You did? Yeah. Over Took too long. Yeah. Wow. Took too long to answer that one. Yeah. <laughs> Took too long to answer. This guy's a fucking spy. Well, I don't remember. This guy's a fucking spy, dude. You know who you were rooting for? Chairman Drago killed Apollo Creed. Yeah, that was fucked up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, I wasn't. Did you turn yeah. the movie off then? Were you like, that's the end? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the comedy skills have improved. I gotta say, like, like, you know, he's much oh, sharper. They're much sharper than. Thank I you, Vlad. <laughs> <laughs> the comedy aficionado. <laughs> um. So yeah. So here I am. Growing up in this environment where it's always like a level of animosity, you know what I'm saying? And I think that's what initially drew from me to hip hop. Like, for, 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 well, against me. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I remember this one time this kid was like, "Yeah, I could shoot you, and nothing will happen because you're Russian." Like, mm. You know what I mean? Like statements, Damn. like really hurtful statements, like that when you're like yeah. ten years old. You, you punch so people kid. have been threatening to kill you for a while. Yeah, I'm used to it. Like that's, you think maybe it's you? Maybe, <laughs> you know maybe I'm, I'm, I'm the problem. I'm it the might problem. be if it started at ten <laughs> and it's still going. Americans have smoke for Russians like that though. Hell yeah, we were. You gotta understand because I'm a little older than you. There was a, a time, and this is the time I'm talking about, where a nuclear war was a real conversation. I remember Peace. that when Mikhail Gorbachev, you know Gorbachev with Reagan and Gorbachev. No, no, before Gorbachev. Like, oh. like, yeah, like this during is Brezhnev early. and stuff like that. Like, there, there, there was there was TV shows called like The Day After, mm -hmm. which is about what happens when a nuclear war happens and what you're supposed to do and everything yeah. else like that. Hey. There was a real, there was a, you know, these days people don't think that people are going to launch nukes against each other, but in the 80s, that was a real conversation. Even, even so before. I was kind of considered kind of it was the enemy. It was before that. It was during like JFK administration. Well, but it kept right? going, right? Yeah, yeah. It yeah. wasn't until Gorbachev came in and started to be friendly with America, right? Which ultimately led to the decline of the USSR. Before then, there was always animosity, yeah. between America and Russia. Hundred percent. What was you know the beef over? I mean, I'm sure it's, of course it's always over money and resources, but what was it over? I mean, I mean who's, who's the, the over democracy versus yeah. communism? Nah, who's, and, the, who's the superpower after and, World and War Two? And who's the superpower after World War Two? Yeah. And you know, think about. All the wars that were being fought in, you know, Vietnam, Afghanistan. This is really Russia and America fighting against each other on other people's turf. Yeah. They, yeah. They basically say the space race was like designed to bankrupt Russia. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when Reagan did this speech and he was talking to Russia and he was like, why are we beefing with each other when there could potentially be a threat from a, another planet? <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> you yeah, don't remember that? Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. That was wild. And like, that was a, he said that and it was just like, everybody's like, yo, he's right. We should have peace. Yeah. No, motherfucker. What about the people from the other planet he's talking yeah, about? Yeah, 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 what yeah, about yeah. them? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. But that's what <laughs> white people have to do to create unity, I've realized. <laughs> Aliens. Like, not like, because like other groups can be like, we can't fight with each other. It's these white people holding us down. But white people don't have that. <laughs> so we got to be like, I think there's aliens. I think like, Thanos is on the yeah, way. Yeah, 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 but, but, but to answer your question, it was, it was really just the way that I was treated as an outcast that like when hip hop came around, like, you know what I mean? It was like, oh, okay, like I can kind of relate to what's happening. And then like the other black and Hispanic kids that were kind of going through the same kind of racism that I was kind of going through. And, and in a way, we all sort of started to fuck with each other. You felt like an outsider. Yeah. You relate to these other people who are outsiders. Exactly. Now, all these people are not necessarily giving you like um, uh, the easiest uh, pathway to friendship, I imagine, early on. Not really, man. We're all kids. Oh, but so you did feel like you had a community. Yeah. Before you just said there wasn't like a Russian community. Yeah. But in, like, in fact, in fact, there was a like like someone who I'm really close friends with still to this day, like my oldest friend, essentially, this guy named, uh, I'm not going to say his name, but anyways, he was he was half black, half Russian. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so it was this interesting sort of like, 
You know what I mean? Like, like me and him started to really fuck with each other because he had like a Russian mother and a black father and, you know, that, that type of thing. And it was like me and him just kind of like, that was the only Russian kid in the school, but mm. he looked black. So he wasn't, and his name was Mike as opposed to Vlad. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't yeah. getting the flack that he was on the Russian side, but he was getting the black so racism part. Y'all I mean? bonded over being a uh, outcast basically. Yeah. And then what, hip hop? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I was like, we had a little breakdance crew in elementary school. What was the name of your breakdance crew? Like? Oh, shit, I don't remember. I remember my name, I think, was Kid Fresh. Kid <laughs> Fresh. We had the, you remember like the the hats with like the flaps in the back? Yeah. And you, you would put your name, it was like the checker, the black yeah. and white checker, and you, you'd have the vans to go with it. And then you'd put like Kid Fresh, and, like the red felt letters, you know, from Vlad the, the is way harder than Fresh. <laughs> the name Vlad is way harder. Yeah, Vlad oh. goes fresh. in a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kid, yeah. yeah. Kid Fresh TV just doesn't really have the same. Nah. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. That's dope. So you're bonded over hip hop. Yeah. And then what about your parents? Like, what's your relationship with them? Uh, I mean, my father passed away. Are we talking about back then or now? Back then. Back then, my parents were, were immigrants. You know, my dad never really spoke yeah. English all that well. My mom did a little bit more because she was a bit younger than him. Yeah. Um, they never really integrated into American society all that well. My dad couldn't really keep a job, so he had to start his own company. Yeah. He, like inspected homes. My mom kept like the stable government job. Uh, but they never really like we had no American friends. It, like 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 my family's my parents didn't have American friends ever. They had other Russians that they yeah. would go and just common for associated with. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And but like there was always the but I was American. Right. Like culturally, I'm completely American. They don't know. Were they proud of that? Did they not like that? It was just sort of it always created somewhat of a, well, a disconnect between, you know, like me and my mother aren't close these days. Like, were you close with your father? A little bit closer to him. Were, were they was there ever a moment where like they were proud of your success? Did you They never you understood it? it? They don't understand it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They, they don't really know what I do. You know, what I mean, like <clears throat> I me, mean, in fact, I remember when. um There was this point in my life when you know, the dot-com crash happened mm. and um, my business got wiped out and I'd always wanted to do the DJ thing. And I spent a year trying to do it in the Bay and then I decided I was going to move to New York. Like I, I, I had the last few dollars I had. I was, you know, basically went to New York to go live on my friend's couch. Mm. And my mom took me to the airport and to the airport, she was describing how I'm wasting my life and throwing my life away and just not, not taking things seriously. You know what I mean? And, and wasting my time. And like, I, remember I was like, literally like crying in the car, like yeah. hearing my mom say that. Yeah. So it was always like, I right, like I'm gonna do this without y'all understanding what I do, and eventually y'all will see it or you won't. But I th I'm on my own path with it. I think it's hard for immigrant parents to see their kids take non-traditional paths, right? Because they're like, yo, we risk so much yeah. for you to come to a stable place where you could be a fucking lawyer, a doctor, like some place where you could have security, yeah. And then you're going on this like artsy dream, yeah. And that's probably difficult for the kid because. I imagine, like all of us, you want your parents to, you know, feel proud of you or validate what you're doing. Right. So at what point do you go, I'm never going to get that from the people that mean the most to me? I just accepted it early on. I'm never wow. going to get it. That's they're they're never going to understand. That's tough. They're never going to say, they don't listen to American music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They don't, they don't follow American, you know, non headline type news. They don't know. They don't have black friends. Mm hmm. All my, yeah. all my relationships with women have always been black. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they don't, there's always been the disconnect of like, what I am is very different than who they are. Mm. And that never changed. What would have made them happy? Like, what, what could you have done you think would have made them happy? Oh, I'm sure if I married a Russian Jewish girl and yeah. stayed as a computer programmer, that would be like. I mean, going to Berkeley everything. must have made them proud. Yeah, I mean, it did. It did. Yeah. And, you know, but ultimately I became a DJ, so. <laughs> Right, so, so I feel like you like, wasted like, your education. Yeah, and you know something? Yeah. I, I felt early on that like when I was getting to the DJ thing, I was 29 at the time when I moved to New York. I was like, damn, like I really wasted all this time in college because all these other DJs are way ahead of me because they've been starting since they were 16, 17. Mm. You know what I mean? But now you're using that. But now, now but now right. it's like in retrospect, like, wow, that actually helped me out in the future, not in this particular field, but in what I ended up going into afterwards. So yeah. life is a long journey. You know, you have to, you have to take it all you know, with a grain of salt and be appreciative for all the knowledge you got, even though if you don't understand how you're utilizing it at the time. Is it's, that why you called yeah. yourself the butcher for a little while? That was just like... Just to make you think you had a regular job. <laughs> 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 no, nah, th that was... Um, 
Is, is that what your Ukrainian <laughs> Vlad folks? The butcher. Son, he's uh, a spy, bro. Uh, Vlad the Butcher. Don't that sound like something? You sound like a butcher. Nah. That's like an Italian mafia name. Right? Benny took Vlad it, the Benny, butcher. Benny calls himself the butcher now. Uh, I like that. Uh, yeah, Benny the Butcher. I like that. Benny, yeah, I know. That that's actually, I didn't even, Alchemist pointed that out. Mm -hmm. He was like, because I remember I hit him up when I first heard Benny before he blew up. I'm like, yo, Benny the Butcher's dope. He was yeah. like, one butcher to another. And I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good point. Good point. I, I, named my, I named the butcher after the gangs in New York. Character. Yeah. Oh, That's okay. what I figured it came from. Yeah. yeah. And we, I even sampled the, the butcher, like, for my mixtapes and stuff like yeah. that. I would think if your parents, you know, if you're an immigrant parent, the American dream is the American dream. Like, meaning that it's broad. Like, it means that you could literally come here and whatever you can conceive in your mind you can achieve yeah like that's what i would think it is like i think when you just limit it to three or four jobs it's I, not really a dream is it I, I again I, my mom is an immigrant so like and, and she came here and she kind of lived that dream right she did a, a non-traditional job so yeah. she had a lot of confidence in my ability to do that but i but also if your parents come here and they do more of a traditional job so that you can do it right. they're going wow <clears throat> this is security mm-hmm this is great. I think parents always want security for their kids. Yeah. So it's not that they don't believe in them. It's more, how am I going to make sure you're okay when I'm gone? Mm. I, that's what I assume it is. Mm. You know, mm. I mean, I'm sure you guys mm. feel that way about kids, right? Like, don't you want, like, I, you probably want your daughters to do whatever they want, but there's a little part of you that's like, well, it'd be nice if you get those degrees so you give us something to fall back on. No, I don't think like that. Really? No, I mean, no, listen, I want, I want them to do whatever it is that makes them happy. I do want them to have stability, but I don't know where that's going to come from. Yeah. I don't think stability necessarily comes from getting a degree. That's you true. You know what I'm saying? But you know that more than most. I yeah. Think. So it's like I could never like, how could I do what I do and then look to mm -hmm. them and be like, well, y'all got to get a degree and y'all got, why would I want them to have, I don't want them to have a job. You know what I mean? I want them to start a business. Ah, ah, ah. You, you know? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you do like, want them to work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Like my daughter, my daughter loves cheerleading. The thing I'm always thinking about, because I can see that's her passion, is say, how can she monetize this? Mm. You know, is it through merchandise? Is, are you going to own your own cheer gym? Yeah. One day? Like, th that's, th those are the things I'm planting in her head now. That's smart. You know? So. Yeah, because the career for a cheerleader might be short, but. Oh, it's money there's a, a cheer thing. There's money in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But not as a cheerleader. Not as a, not as a cheerleader. Mm. Right. No, not as a cheerleader. Right. Not as a cheerleader. But sometimes we fall in love with shit that's not very lucrative. And that's cool, too. Like, you look at, like, ballerinas and stuff like that. Like, most ballerinas aren't making that much money, but right. they've dedicated their entire life to this performance. Yeah. And it's just the most important thing to them. Absolutely. And then maybe the smart ones, like, have found a way to monetize it outside of that. Like, uh, there's, I forget her name, uh, Misty Copeland, I Misty think. Is her. She's a ballerina? Yeah. No. Yeah, she's, like, the the first black... Uh, oh, she's a gymnast. Ballerina like premier ballerina she's built for, like a gymnast that's what she's she's actually very toned yeah she's it's like, like non-traditional ballet built yeah she's not typical she's not typically built like a ballerina yeah, ballerina, yeah. but she's, she's you know doing amex commercial she's she's found a way to like monetize that that fame outside of it yeah it's just, i don't know vlad it's just a kind of interesting like sometimes you hear someone's story like you hear like their childhood and kind of like what how they you know formed into a human being and that kind of informs like the choices that they make like mm. I don't know, knowing that about you, like feeling like this kind of outsider, I think you see like a white guy in hip hop, you don't necessarily put together like what your identity was as a kid. Mm. Your identity wasn't white kid. Your identity was, I'm fucking Russian and motherfuckers are telling me I'm Russian every day. The white kids aren't going, come hang out with us, white guy. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. When's the first time you saw yourself in hip hop? Like when you saw, who was the person you saw that made you say, oh, I can, I can be in hip hop. I could be part of the, the culture. Ooh, that's interesting. Hmm. I mean, early, early on, I would probably have to say, I guess when you saw the Beastie Boys. Yeah, Beastie Boys. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Beastie Boys are possibly third base, but I think a little more of the Beastie Boys because they were sort of like kind of fast and loose with the, you know, I mean, they were hip hop, but also kind of rock and punk, you know, at the same yeah. time. And, and Jewish and, and, too, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. Adam, yeah. Adam, Adam Horowitz. Yeah. Or, you know, Ad-Rock. He's Jewish. So it's like you sort of see that, you know, the way they sort of played around with the genres and kind of how dope they were. And it was like, you know, that first album, License to Ill, was just crazy, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It was one of the all time, I think, best albums, period. Mm -hmm. Genre, genre, you know, aside. And it was like, oh, OK, like these, these kids is really being authentic in who they are. You know, what I mean, like third base was more like 
kind of traditionally black hip hop. You know what I mean? Like Surge had the high top fade and you know, the yeah, way they yeah, styled yeah, themselves yeah. and so yeah. forth. I'm like, I, I don't, I can't really do that. Yeah. But what the Beastie Boys are doing, like that's kind of like, yo, like I can kind of relate to that a little bit more. It's so interesting because I don't think the dynamics of uh, black and Jewish, black and Jewish relations in hip hop are discussed enough. Yeah. Because it's been like that from the onset. Mm. Yeah, we, we talk, it's Def Jam. People think Def Jam, most iconic hip hop label ever, right? It's Russell Simmons and Rick Rubin. Mm. It don't happen without them. You yeah. know what I mean? Then eventually yeah. it's Leo Cohen comes around. It's just yeah. like, it does not happen without that dynamic. Well, it does, but that dynamic is actually a cool dynamic. Mm -hmm. You think it still happens without it? Yeah, of course. There's you think of... Def Jam still becomes Def Jam without like... No, I mean, I mean, like, there's not always Jewish guys involved in every label and stuff like that. Shit. <laughs> which yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, which yeah, one yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like, who who's running Capital right now? Who's running Epic right now? Oh, I mean, now. Yeah, that's well, what I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Back then, I mean, listen, man, like, you know, you're talking about two groups of people that is Jimmy have, Iovine Jewish? I don't think I so. Would, I, I think he's a like Catholic or something. Uh, but, I would, I would think so. Seems Italian. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm he saying. Does seem Italian. Yeah, I think. Iveen, you yeah. want to look that up? Yeah, but um, but I think what you're pointing out is there is this like marriage within hip hop, and it's been incredibly successful. Absolutely. And like both groups are, you know, playing a major part in this, but it's not really discussed that this love affair of the art has become so successful. I agree with you. I think that's interesting, mm -hmm. and then I need to understand why, and I need to understand why it's understood because it's not like. Yeah, I, I need a, that's that's I think that's a cool story to tell. I think so. And I think that, you know, when you tell that story, it shows that it's always been more than one culture involved in making hip hop become what it is. Mm. The, the artists also benefit, you know, long term, like look at Public Enemy and their touring career. Like, you know, what I'm saying like even after their Def Jam days, they continued, you know, Chuck D continues to do very well for himself. You know, one of the greatest touring groups, period, internationally. You see what I'm saying? So it's like... But you still want your catalog, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You still want the rights to your masters. Yeah. It's like you probably go out yeah. and tell your jokes a million times, but if somebody owned the right to one of your specials, you'd be like, shit, can I get my special back? I, you don't know how right you are. <laughs> you don't know how right you are about that, Charlemagne. There is... There is, there is a... That's yeah. currently happening? No, I bought it back. I spent, yeah, I spent uh, a ridiculous amount of money to buy it back. Wow. With no plan on how I will monetize it. <laughs> wow. Because <laughs> wow. it's mine, bro. Wow. Because I worked for it, and I made it, <laughs> and I want it. Because it's mine. It's what I made. Hold on. You're opening up a great conversation right now because... It's mine. What's the point of this? I'm not, I don't want to say what's the point of having it back. Yeah. What's the point of having it all back if you don't even know what to do with it? Well, I know, what is, I know what to do with it, though. Okay. I need to give it to the people the exact way I want to give it to them. Okay. But what if that company you was with had a plan and y'all were doing it 50-50? Yeah. Or even 64, whatever it is. That's possible. You know what I mean? Yeah. What if they had a plan on how to distribute it, how to monetize it, how to promote it, market it. Mm -hmm. Is it worth letting them have part ownership? Charlamagne, we've known each other a while. Yeah. I'm a pain in the ass. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I know how to do things one way. Yeah, 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 yeah. My way. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah, yeah, yeah. And when it comes to the, the, my, my stand-up, which I love more than anything, obviously when it comes to a collaborative effort like this, mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, your way, but when it comes oh, it's to not? no, I'm just joking. That's not true. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But like when it comes to my art, the thing that I care the most about—it's goofy to call it art—but like my stand-up is I, I worked my whole life for this. Yeah, so yeah, I was yeah. in you know this situation where I had you know the opportunity to buy my special back and uh, put it out the way that I want to put it out with the exact material that I want to put it out, and um, I took advantage of that opportunity and. I've worked very hard and I was fortunate enough to save up a bunch of money throughout my career and I I used it all to buy my my special back. <laughs> yeah, I know. Would you sell Vlad TV like if a company came along? I think anyone would sell anything for the right price. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean apart from 
What about throat yeah. human beings? <laughs> oh, we getting to that, yeah. Vlad. Hold on, we hold on. We getting to that. Wait, what, what, Vlad what? had a great post about four hours ago I want to talk about, but go ahead. What, what, what? Oh. But in terms of companies, uh, I think every company is up for sale for the right price. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I've had various conversations with companies over the years that, that want to buy it. But I think the thing for me is that unless the price is astronomical, where it's like, all right, I could sell this and, I never have to worry about money. I could, I could maintain my lifestyle. I could expand my lifestyle and never have to worry about money and have it multi generational. That's cool. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, it has to be almost like, um, you know, not just say it's an equivalent company, but like for example, like look at what Disney did with Lucasfilms. They they bought it for a billion dollars mm -hmm. and they expanded it. They put it on steroids. Like you know, mm. like look at all the series on Disney Plus from Mandalorian to Boba Fett to Obi Wan Kenobi. You know, what I mean, to more and more, you know, to more movies coming out and ex expanding everything else, like having, um, you know, uh, Star Wars at Disneyland, which I want to go visit, and it's crazy. They have a fucking Millennium Falcon, mm -hmm. life size, mm -hmm. a life size Millennium Falcon, and like one of those Darth Vader joints. Like, so it's like for someone to come in and say, "Look, like we're going to take Vlad TV and we're going to up the production 10x, where you know, and give you access to to various things that." us as a major company have access to and really make this a huge global bl brand, then I would consider doing it. Absolutely. But until, until that day comes, we've steadily been increasing every year for 15 years. So can it exist know. without you? I mean, it already has. I mean, if you look at what's been happening in 2022, I do probably the minority of the interviews. Wow. Right? So for example, my man, uh, Sean Prez, Who's uh, Sean Prez? My yeah. guy. Shout out to Sean Prez. He's done a lot of epic interviews, like the Young Jock interview that that's running right now. Which I think just finished. It was one of our big, big interviews. Our little C's interview was was phenomenal. Another one of our big interviews. Uh, Those Sean, are good for Prez because Prez was around. Bad Boy. Yeah, he exactly. Was Those were all Jock was the artist on Bad Boy. Yeah. Of course, mm -hmm. he's big. Yep. Uh, Shirley Jew. You know, she's like a younger uh, Asian female. Uh, interviewer that contracts for us and she brings in a lot of the, the younger artists and she connects more with like, you know, sort of like the younger generation, mm -hmm. uh, coach PR. He does um, a lot of the sports stuff. You know I mean? I, I could, I could do the sports stuff, but he's just better at it than me. Cause he's yeah. more of a sports guy. And then we started actually launching podcasts on the network. So some of our regular guests that have done well, so like Rico Reckless and Ewa Samo, they just filmed their second podcast, uh, Ari Spears and his guy, Gerard, he has their own, he has his own podcast on there. So, so the goal is, is, for me to come in and just do the really, I mean, because I still have a really strong passion for interviewing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like I just interviewed Birdman's brother, uh, you know. Oh, I meant the watch. Gangster, that. Terrence Gangster Williams. So it's like, there's a certain thing, you know, or like Sammy the Bull, I just did that interview. So those interviews I still want to do myself because I'm just really, it's, it's a thrill for me to actually sit down and put together this piece. But by keep, by, you know, maintaining and growing the number of clips that we put out every day, it's going to require a bigger team of interviewers and a bigger, type of product you know a bigger array of products so that's the whole thing like just keep stepping away and kind of like an, like an oprah yeah, oprah yeah, will come yeah. in and still do leaving neverland or you know the the royal you know that royal the royal couple but most of the work is done by people that work for it. do you regret putting your name on it because i was looking uh like two days ago i think it was a couple of days ago and i saw nle chopper going back and forth with vlad tv's right twitter account and I'm like, well, the, the, I know it, it's it not a, Vlad tweet. Well, no, nah. it was the DJ Vlad Twitter account. So it is and it isn't, right? Because that was you tweeting? Not, well, yes and no. Like there's a Twitter feed that okay. goes through that account. So every, you know, Vlad TV, one of the, one of our companies is VladTV.com, mm -hmm. which is the news site. So I don't, I don't run that. You know, uh, you know, my man Evan is the, the content manager. He decides what goes on that site, but it goes through my account. So since I have the biggest Twitter account associated with Vlad TV, um, so it goes through there. So it, it went up, it came up and it was, you know, how, you know, Justin Bieber had that, that, that situation where yeah, his face, his yeah, he, he, half his face is paralyzed. Ramsey and, uh, heart syndrome or something. Like yeah. That? Yeah. Ramsey, yeah. Ramsey heart syndrome, I think. Yeah. And, uh, Emily Chopper said, you know, oh, I've been trying to contact Justin Bieber. How call me as soon as possible. I got some herbs that'll, that'll fix all that. So, you know, we weren't trying to clown him or anything. We just, the article went up with that title. Yeah. And other people were reporting on it as well. And then he replied back to me, you know, since I tweeted it, was like, stop posting me, you chump ass yeah. N-word. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
And usually I just ignore shit like that, but I guess today I got time, cuz. So. <laughs> <laughs> you called him a fraud. You said if you've been out here selling these pills that say you can give you a BBL and yeah. uh, cure herpes and you called him a snake oil salesman. He was yeah. showing his age. That's when I knew Vlad. I go, Vlad, 40 something like me. You <laughs> him a snake oil, snake oil, oil salesman. Snake oil salesman. I mean, am I wrong? Um, I mean, has he, has he cured? I mean, and what I, I said, any I said, that stuff can be cured with a pill. Right. I mean, you know, he said, you know, the whole thing was like, he was like, you, you know, when he called me a chump and I'm like, this coming from the chump who says you can cure cancer. And his response was, I did. Oh, he said he did? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't and I said, did. you, you haven't cured shit. An actual wow. cure requires multiple levels of testing of hundreds of people and peer reviews. Mm -hmm. You just tweeted about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, salute to Ellie Chopper, but uh, it's been a lot of people trying to cure cancer for a long time. I don't think he can create a pill that can cure cancer. I'm not, I'm, I'm not right. the highest grade of weed in the dispensary. Right. It's, not, not, it's not resident. I'm not the strongest Avenger, but I think I'm pretty safe from saying I don't yeah. think he can cure cancer with a pill. Yeah, I not, mean, if if he could, like... He'd be a billionaire. Yeah, he wouldn't trillion. be rapping. No, anymore, actually, right? he'd be like, dead. <laughs> facts. They, they Pharmaceutical they, companies they come get in. him out of here. Dead. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Right. It's not, it's not resident evil where you could just... But why you respond? know, when you're sick, you get a plant... <laughs> Why, if you know that he can't and everybody else knows that he can't, why respond to that? I think the thing was when he said, stop posting. me," And it's like, you're not going to tell me who to post. But like, I don't know. Do you care what people think about you? Is that why? Are you motivated? Like, do you think they could be like, oh, NLE job a son, Vlad, or something like why, why the need to react to that? Like, I just, you know, I mean, he's talked shit about him before. He's calling me the police on his Twitter and stuff like that. I didn't right. react. But, you know, I mean, telling me not to, I, I feel like, had he said, don't post me, and then for whatever reason we didn't post him, yeah. it would look like he's telling us what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, 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 like the outside public. Yeah, the outside perceive. public. You know, like, like yeah. Young Blue said, you know, stop posting me. And my response was, nope. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just that. And then he deleted his tweet afterwards. But if you, know, if you did post him afterwards without saying no, people would know that you're not listening to. It seems like you're concerned. Today, with today I had that. time because, like, you know, yeah. what I mean, J just that day he caught me on that one day, and I and I, I responded, and you know, I think I think really, and, and to me, this is sort of a bigger picture because it's like you have people that are really sick, right? Who really are going through serious medical conditions, and if they're spiritual, mm. people like an Emily Chopper will get them to to, to really question their doctors and, and question actual medicine that has yeah. research and history behind working for certain things. They're going to be like, oh, well, let me stop taking chemotherapy and take these herbs and then end up dying. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It, creates, it creates a level of confusion with people who, who feel a level of spirituality and, and feel some sort of connection to, to herbs and science, you know, and, and, and kind of like, you know, African, uh, you know, um, healing and stuff like that. Like, you know, and, and I think that there's a lot too. And I think that there is certain herbs that could help, that could help ease situations and help ease the pain, but you're not going to get a BBL from a fucking plant. That's wild. Like, you know you what take I'm a saying? BBL and then all of a sudden your breast get Yeah, you're not going to get bigger fat. titties. You're not going to cure cancer. I mean, he also said he, he, he was, he was shitting eight times a day. You know, you're like once shit every time you eat. Eight times a day he was taking a shit. That's a lot of shit. That's a, a lot, lot of shit. Shits. That's a lot you of shit. You can't even say he's full of shit. Yeah. He's not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, I don't have anything against anybody being holistic. I'm just saying, go talk to like actual people who are into that in that space in a real way, right? You know what I mean? But go, a lot of people say fake things on the internet. That's the internet. Vlad. I, but even with the thing, what, uh, uh, what you said about like, going back and forth with Anna Lee Chopper, I almost feel yeah. like that's part of it now. Like if you're a Vlad or academics or you know uh, Adam, like it's like when artists go at you, it don't hurt. It all it does is really promotion and marketing at this point. It's like, yo, you throw a tweet back yeah. to them. Next thing you know, it's a story. You know what I mean? It was on air. Like, I didn't think, I just thought it was just no one really noticed. Like, I wasn't doing it to try to like, ooh, let me get on the blogs. Like, I don't, I don't really care about that. We're, yeah. we're on the blogs essentially every week anyways. For you are. For one of our interviews. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, but I'm talking about like the Shade Room or Ball Alert, No yeah. Jumper, Say Cheese, whatever, you yeah. know, ac academics, Power 105. Like, yeah. you guys cover my shit anyways. Yeah. So I, I'm not trying to, to, that's not the goal of what I do. But like, yeah, I just, I had like, he had like two tweets, I had two tweets and everyone picked it up. Double XL, say geez. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, start, it's starting to be everywhere. And I'm like, okay. 
That's why I say it doesn't hurt. It doesn't, doesn't really no, hurt. It's, it's great marketing. People love uh, beef. They love fights. Yep. They're interested in it. It's yep. like, you know, when you're in the lunchroom and two people start going at it, right? Everybody looks over. Ooh, what's going on? I just wonder if there's, is there anybody that could say something about you and then you wouldn't respond because it's not worth your time or you wouldn't care what the people would think if you didn't respond? 99% of the time I don't respond. Gotcha. And I have prominent, you know, major artists or whatever. Talking shit. Talking, you know, yeah. I mean, people are taking shots at me from, you know, from some of the biggest. Does it hurt ever? Like, <laughs> if you're being hurt. honest, like, it, th are you ever just like, fuck, why don't, you, why don't you guys just accept me? Why can't I be in this? Like, oh, that's a good question. Yeah, like did, that's a good question. If you if you're being truthful, is there ever a moment where you're just like, <laughs> like you want to be accepted I, by? A I really wish you guys would accept me. Uh, listen, would I would I love to be nominated at every at every award show and get access to every large A list artist when they go on on, the, on their promo run and so forth? Sure. Who who wouldn't? Who mm -hmm. wouldn't want that type of access and love and everything else like that? But at some point, you got to really realize that you you have to you have to be happy with the the viewers as well as you know the business side of things and for me you could check that off a lot like mm. you know what i mean like like we really we do two to three million views a day every day on, on just the youtube channel then the facebook channel sometimes gets a million views by mm -hmm. itself and then you know what i'm saying it, it's, it's like and we have a whole membership, you know, like we launched a membership last year and it's grown into the thousands and thousands of members. Every, every month we get more and more members. Like we have 15 employees, everyone has health insurance. Like there's so much to be happy for. There's so much to be grateful for that you can't spend your time crying about how, you know, uh, you know, Pusher T doesn't, you know, do my show when he's going his promo run. Like it just is what it is. Everything you know you're saying, saying is completely yeah. logical. I think right. that's the right way to do it. Yeah. And 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 to say that, like, I mentioned on Pusher T's album twice. Right. <laughs> you right, see what right, I'm saying? So right. whether or not they're coming in and actually doing it, clearly it's, it's part of the culture. Like, you know, I mean, you're the one that told me, he's like, yo, Pusher T's mentioning Vlad on his first song on his new album. Yeah, Pusher mentioned it. He, and well, then, he referenced the interview with, um, what's his name? Uh, Jeezy, manager? yeah, Jeezy, yeah. uh, Jeezy Gonzalez, right. And then even the Jay Z, the, the, the Jay Z, Z line course. was That's was about one of our love. interviews. Yeah, yeah, the Phase on Love interview. Uh, you know, two chains of song called Vlad, Vlad TV. TV. Like, you know, what I mean, so it's sort of like whether I'm I'm given the the love or whatever, the impact is there. You're part of the culture, one hundred percent, one hundred percent part. Yeah, of like the you're validated by the people that are enjoying the content. Right, right. But we're also like emotional fucking human beings. And we also like admire, yeah. you know, people that are in this art form that we love. The same yeah. way I feel about stand up, I'm sure you feel about hip hop. Yeah. And it's for whatever reason, as stupid as it is, it's difficult for us to to swallow certain situations where we really admire somebody and they're not acknowledging the work that we're doing. Well that's but, that's what I'm wondering if you ever like I love Patrice O'Neill, rest in peace. But if Patrice was like, I don't like this kid, this guy sucks, like, that would fucking break my heart. I would have to go, man, but look at all these other people that that love my stuff and I'd lean into that. Ooh. But it would fucking break, it would break my heart, man. Well, the thing is though, you have to internalize a lot of that, right? So I have to be truthful in terms of my approach, in terms of how I do, how I built the company and how I do my interviews. You know, if I wanted to, you know, to really have everyone love me and have access to everyone and have everyone shout me out, like let's say a Ralph McDaniels, Right, like like everyone loves Ralph McDaniels. Like yeah. Nas will sit down. You know, Jay Z McDaniels. loves yeah. Ralph. McDaniels. When they did the Nog documentary, everyone stepped in. Everything else like that. But you know, I interviewed Ralph McDaniels, and he was just like, you know, I just love hip hop so much. I I never want to report on anything negative. I never want to ask anything any tough questions. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to just celebrate what they're doing, and that's all I wanted to do. But that also limited the growth mm -hmm. of, of his brand. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, it did, and you can't you can't deny that. And with us, I came in with more of a 60 minutes approach of like, you know something, I'm going to ask the really tough questions that no one's going to ask. And that's going to alienate me from a certain number of people. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because people are scared to do Vlad TV interviews. Like, you know, I mean, like I remember I, like I saw Saucy Santana. She tweeted, he, he tweeted, uh, like if Vlad TV wants me to do an interview. I'm scared with all these R's and D's and whatever else, because people are, are, are sometimes scared to sit down, with people, you know, just like with you yeah. uh, in, in, certain, in certain aspects. Because they know that there's going to be the tough questions, the uncomfortable questions, the the stuff that no one else wants to ask, and so forth. And 
that was the bed that I made and I lie in that bed. And I understand with that comes a level of access that I don't get. I don't get invited to the white parties and, you know, the, the Rock Nation brunches and stuff like that. But what I've done has numbers wise surpassed the people that, that have played that game and have, you know, kept those relationships and always said nice things about certain people and never, never report on anything negative. You know, we've done way bigger than that numbers wise and so forth and impact wise as well. So to me, that, that's part of the acceptance of it all. I guess people w- would want to know, does Vlad TV have a conscience? Like, meaning like, is there certain things that come across the platform? You're like, nah, I'm not going to put that out. All the time, every day. Is there anything that you put out that in retrospect you regret putting out? I mean, Sean Perez did an interview with a guy that said he was the former president of Murder, Inc. and that he got in the car with 50 got shot. We come to find out nothing is true with regards to that. It was just a crazy mm. person who sat down and we put it out. Wow. And, you know, 50 called us out on it. Just said, put a screen capture and said fraud on it. And I remember, I remember calling oh, he John. Said he was in the car with 50? Yeah. And, you know, Jesus Sean, Christ. and like, you know, and, and it's like, this was Sean's interview. Like my outside interviewers, they book their own interviews. Right. That, 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 that's what our relationship is like most of the time. So he brought this guy in. He's done other interviews. I'm, Sean is someone who's been in the music industry longer than I have. He was like, this guy's legit. When 50 put up the fraud shit, I remember I called Ja Rule and I'm like, do you know who this guy is? And Ja's like, I've never fucking seen him before in my life. <laughs> I called Chris Gotti, same thing. And I'm like, fuck, let me take this down, you know, and I, I addressed it, I think, when, uh, when I, Math Hoffa interviewed me and I mm-hmm. was like, we fucked up. Anything you know, specifically you did in an interview that you regret putting out? Not, not really, because if I put it out, I stand behind it. Even Fair you enough. thought Tupac was still alive on E2? I, I never, I never said, <laughs> never, never said Tupac. Because Charlotte, you, you even said to me there's things like in retrospect, like you, I think oh, you yeah. even said like, like what are some things that you were like, you know what? I, oh, a bunch of stuff, especially when you started seeing um, climate change, right? Like when you started seeing the, the climate of the culture change. Yeah. And you knew, you know what's going to get people fucked up. Yeah. And so it's just like, I'm not going to put that out. You know what I mean? Like I'm not going to put that out from this person because I know that this is going to cause this community yeah. to do this. And this is going to cause him backlash. And sometimes the artists don't even know it. So it's like, you Ex- got to stay them from themselves. Exactly. You know what I'm they're saying? They're not <laughs> aware. They grew up in a way where they're not aware that saying certain things could limit opportunities for them in the future. Now it's not your responsibility to like educate these people on that. But at the same time, if you're aware of the repercussions, you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's maybe you, maybe you could go, Hey, are you sure you want me to put this out like that? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Well, what it's, the... it's, it's tricky, right? Cause I, I say it all the time. You're not forcing people to say this shit. Though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, they're they're showing up. If they yeah. sit down and they give it up and they're telling all of these stories and everything else. Yeah. Whose fault is that? If, yeah. you're, if you're comfortable enough to sit down in front of a camera and say it, why should I even think twice right. about putting it up? Well, there's also this kind of false narrative that somehow people I interview the interviews are used in court cases and you know which i've never actually heard of happening like like literally i've never heard of any of our interviews being used in a court case ours, ever. ours have yeah breakfast club has yeah i mean nick cannon you know like when when uh casanova got his uh bond revo- you know denied the actual prosecutor was mentioning nick cannon's interview with casanova mm. yeah we actually put out the audio of the actual you know meeting with the district attorney and everything else like that that's ha- that's happened to y'all too though Mm-mm. really no Oh. There was fake articles about it. Like, I remember, like, there was this fake article about, you know, when I was trending for, like, two days. It was so annoying. Because there was a fake article that said, Judge personally thanks Vlad TV for helping to convict A.R. Ab. And there was a picture of some white judge in A.R. Ab. It was from wow. a, a news site no one had ever heard of. But, like, you know, all these people, like, Quest Love were like, yeah, I, see, I told y'all. Like, you know, we're like, they're all trying to cancel me and shit like that over that. And, and it was like, the shit isn't true. Like, it's simply, like, A.R. Ab himself. In interviews since he's been locked up, said Vlad got nothing to do with my shit. Yeah, I mean, there's remember there's a rumor that that somehow I was involved in Tax Stone's situation. Mm. Got nothing to do like me and Tax Stone still talk. Yeah. Tax Stone did an interview saying Vlad got nothing to do with my case. What yeah. Vlad got to do with my case, like you know what I mean. But I think they use a lot of those interviews in discovery, but they don't like it. Don't mean anything. It's not like it's being used as evidence. It's like if you've ever sat down and had like I know I know plenty of Breakfast Club interviews have been used in discovery, whatever the fuck that means. I'm not a lawyer, you know what yeah. I mean. But it's not in like evidence 
it's not like being used as evidence against somebody in a court of law. Right. Because yeah. why it's inadmissible I, I don't or something like I, that? I, I, I think some of sometimes it's just not pertinent information. Right. You right, know what I mean? Right, so right. it's just like, oh, well, he sat down with Breakfast Club and said X, Y, and Z, but it's not like something that's with the case. It's just in their discovery. I literally just found that out this morning, by the way. But I mean, I've seen Breakfast Club mentioned in court cases. I haven't. I'll, I'll be honest. Really? I'll be. I'll be dead honest. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not making this up. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I we'll get a bunch like of a, tweets right now. I'm, I'm not going to see them because I don't pay attention to Twitter. But we're going to get a bunch of tweets. People say, "No, here's the article," and it's going to be that same, <laughs> article, that same article that you just referenced. Yeah. No. I remember, like, uh, for example, like a uh, Tasha K did the, this uh, this video where she basically said, like, "Yeah, Vlad is working with the police, and he's giving them, you know, interviews directly to them." Blah blah. And our lawyers had to contact her and say, "This is a lie." It's actually not true. What would be the benefit? And she had to, and she had to remove that part of her interview. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. She started to argue whatever, and I'm like, uh, we could escalate this because this is actually defamation. Why yeah. would you have to work with the police? They could just watch it like everyone else. <laughs> no. It's weird that you would have to work with them. <laughs> like, like, it's on YouTube. Everybody, yeah, like, <laughs> everybody let's put it like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody who does a Vlad TV interview is wearing a wire. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> including me. <laughs> they put it on themselves. They they put a lav mic under their shirt, and there's another microphone pointing at them, and two to three cameras pointing at them. That's funny. <laughs> there's no secret recording devices here. You, yeah. there are literally five recording yeah. devices pointed at you oh, as you're speaking man. to me. So whatever you say, you're fully aware that it's going to be released. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, on the two chains internationally. The hook of the song is, I watched a man go on Vlad TV and he told on himself. <laughs> that's <laughs> self. Yeah. That's them. Like, you're yeah. not making them do any of this. Well, now rappers yeah. are telling themselves in the rap. In the music. They actually, there's yeah. actually a, a story behind that. What, the Vlad TV song? Yeah. What happened? You want to hear it? Yeah. Two chains, podcast of four, Vlad. Two chains, <laughs> two chains kind of touched on this on his, on his Drink Champs uh, interview, but what had happened was uh, Two Chains guy reached out to me and was like, yo, we want to sample part of this Benny the Butcher interview um, for Two Chains' new album. And, and people approached us about this all the time. Like, you know, like why Fan Lucci's album had a boosty sample from our interview or, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like stuff like that always, always seems to happen. So I'm like, all right, cool. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. How about he does an interview with me, you know, as he's going on his promo run, and we'll sign off on this Benny the Butcher sample. And he was like, cool, no problem. So, Two Chains came in, we, we all met up at the studio, and uh, I hadn't heard or anything else like this, right? So, I didn't even know the song was called Vlad TV or what the chorus was or whatever. So, we, we do the interview, and the interview was cool, and, um, you know, but there's still no paperwork or whatever. So I reach out and I'm like, can you send me the song and the sample? So I get the song, it's called Vlad TV. And it's about, you know, what you just said. I see a dude go on Vlad TV tell on himself. But then what they did was the sample they wanted to use was my interview with Benny the Butcher, but it was mostly me talking. And they chopped it up in a way to make it sound like I'm somehow trying to like get people caught up. Like they, they literally chopped the interview up oh. in a way to make it sound derogatory towards me and once i heard it i'm like i hit him up and i'm like i'm not i'm not clearing this like and i understand that the interview is contingent on this so i'm scrapping the interview you know what i'm saying but but this right here like y'all y'all know what you're doing here. you know what i'm saying oh, so you had interview two chains for yeah for which, black tv which never came out wow so because, that was like a, it was like a barter like yeah wow yeah so it never came out and then the, the album came out and the song was still called black tv which they could legally do like i you know i'm, I'm fine with that but it wasn't my sample. I had, and I think that that would have given us sort of like the, the really nasty stigma yeah. you know, that, that they were probably trying to go for. Yeah. Mm. But since I wasn't going to okay my voice in that, then they couldn't use that. That's interesting, though, because it's a part of me that's like, why not lean into it? You know, because they're going to say it anyway. They're going to say Office of Vlad, whatever. You might as well just... It's yeah, but, but do you want to be represented falsely? Like if I took one of your interviews on, you know, that we did and chopped it up and made you look like you're saying something you're not saying. Oh, that's, that's been happening to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Welcome well, to the I, internet. Yeah, I, <laughs> what are you yeah, talking about? I, wouldn't, I don't like it. I, right, I agree it's, with it's you, one, I don't like it's it. It's one yeah. thing to have it on the internet, but it's another thing to have it be stamped into history on, on, a, on a major artist's album. Yeah, you yeah, see what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. That, that that's more of a permanent kind of thing. Yeah. I think the me, internet so. is worse. It's hard, easier to share a meme, easier to share a clip than it is to share a song. 
not, but the song lingers on. The meme will go away. Yeah. Is this feeding into a, stig- a stereotype that already exists? I, 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 and at this point, I don't think it'll ever change. I just think it's like some of yeah. us are just the people that people are love to hate. You know what I mean? I, th- I enjoy Vlad TV interviews because I feel like it's, um, I like the documentary style yeah. that, that, that the way the interviews are, are done. You. You know yeah, what I mean? That's, that's what I'm trying for. Yeah, that's what yeah. I that's what I like. Like I learn things when I watch Vlad TV interviews. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you go, you me me personally. That's how yeah. I, that's how I look at it. That's how I look. Yeah, it. maybe we're infantilizing the people that you're interviewing. I don't even know what that word means. Like I, we're I don't treating, know either. Actually, we're treating them like like children, right? We're going, hey, you yes. guys aren't responsible enough to worry about what you say, and Vlad, you're supposed to be a dad and tell people what they can and can't say, and. Maybe that's unfair. Maybe we need to start treating these people you're interviewing like adults and they should know what they right. can or can't say in an interview. But but the fact that nothing we've ever done has been used in court cases or whatever else, doesn't that already imply that the way I'm doing it is actually looking out for the people to make ah, sure I hear what you're that saying. they're not saying? Because I think people think that like you should never talk about a crime. But if you actually, you know, a lot of what we do is in the, the gangster genre, whether it's the mafia guys yep. or whether it's, you know, like, like the, the Rick Ross. There's a statue you know, of limitations. The freeway, the freeway Ricky Rosses or yeah. the convertible Burts or whatever. Like these guys have done the time for what they got convicted for. So they could talk about the kilos and everything else like that. Sammy right. the Bull admitted to 19 murders. Yeah. You know, like, like, like I remember there was like this on Twitter. It was going viral. It was like DJ Vlad be like, walk me through your first murder. And it was like literally had yeah, like tens of thousands of fucking retweets. <laughs> what tens talking? of thousands. Like it was like I'm sitting there like it's, That's it's a great question. That is though. funny though. That right. is funny. <laughs> right. And, and I'm like, <laughs> it's been, you know, if they already did the time, I want to know about it. Well, yeah. and then my response, and I actually responded to it, I was like, Sammy the bull interview coming soon. He did 19 murders. And actually, my first question is walking through your first <laughs> one. So, <laughs> yeah. So is it a stereotype if it's true? Yeah, that's you what I'm feed, saying. Yeah, I that's think that's you feeding, feeding into that's it. That's into dope. It. Yeah, exactly. But by the way, it's Sammy the fucking bull. <laughs> right. He killed 19 people. That's a yeah. valid fucking question. We don't, don't got to feel bad for Sammy the bull. That's yeah. a valid question. Yeah. Right. And I, I don't know if, I don't think any of your critics are worried about you asking Sammy the bull that. I don't think they care. Do you, do you think if you were black, you'd get any pushback? Uh, I mean, Sean Cotton gets pushback. Sean Conn gets called the feds. He, he was like, even our interview, he said, S-A-T's, right? Yeah, S-A-T's. Okay, okay. He was like, people accuse us of working together. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You might, call, get, you might get more pushback people, if you're black. People call academics the feds. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah, and actually, like, like I, I remember what Sean said, which was interesting, was that, like, I'll get certain interviews with both people, like, like, um, like I interviewed both Fulio and um, Young and Ace, right? And he's like, yeah, I wouldn't get both of those guys because people think that I'm playing both sides. Whereas you could kind of sit back and say that you're you're a journalist and you're just getting both people's stories. Like you know what I'm saying? Like he's like at me being black, I get I would get caught in the middle of that, and and you know what I mean people yeah. would be taking it personally. Whereas you seem to be getting away with it, and I'm like, okay, cool. So I mean, I I get certain things, and but he gets certain things as well that yeah. I don't get. So it's all I don't sit there and cry about my race or opportunities I don't get or whatever, man. Like. You, you've known me since before Vlad TV. So Long you time. you saw me get it out the mud. Like you saw me go from being really broke. And you've been, remember my old, uh, my old apartment in, in Jersey? Like, I think you, you've been there before. Yeah, now Way, way in, back um, in the day. I don't, I don't want to say because I don't know if you still have it in there. But no, I, I don't. I, don't. Uh, I think that was in New York. I, I, was, I, don't know. I don't know. But anyways, like, I mean, really, I started off, my hip hop journey started off with me sleeping on couches with a backpack full of CDs that I would leave on consignment to the Africans on Canal Street. So to go from there to millions of people tuning in every day, it's like, who, who am I to cry about it and, and talk about, you know, the lack of opportunities? Like, the fuck? Like, yeah. I, I went from, you know, making mixtapes, worrying that the feds were going to kick down my door and seize everything I own like they did to DJ yeah. Drama. Yeah. You know what I mean? I went from that to actually having a legitimate business, you know what I mean, with content I legally own. You know, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You're not worried about getting arrested or, 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 or you know, losing everything I, I ever built myself up for. Like, what would, what would you say to people who say, "Oh, well, Vlad just profits off black trauma and black death"? Uh, just like every other. Well, number one, I also profit off uh, Italian too. Well, I, I, I also, <laughs> right? That's I also Sammy profit the off killed uh, Italians. I think I would imagine. Yeah. 
I also profit off right. uh, black accomplishment, yeah. black victories. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, do I, do I, is there any interview? I mean, unless I'm talking about, unless I'm dealing with someone who's like a criminal figure and that's the central part of their story. Well, Netflix profits off of like uh, serial killer murders. Like, right. All that. I get it. I'm not. Yeah. No, but to answer your question, like, like if you look at the majority of my interviews, like, sure, the negative gets covered, but then. When I sit down with someone for the first time, I talk about all their accomplishments. Yo, you dropped this album. You dropped, yeah. you had, you. this has 30 million views on Spotify. Like, yo, like this feature was crazy. Like all that gets discussed along the way. Now those might not be the clips that go super viral, but to say that I sit, sit down with people and all I talk about is negative means that you don't actually watch anything that I do. And that's why the best part about the interviews you do with the, you know, the guys who have done it, you're telling the consequences and the repercussions right. of mm. those actions. Exactly. It's not a glorification of, oh, I used to be the biggest drug dealer. I used to kill 90 people. No, you also went to jail for such and such amount of time. Right. You right. also got mental health right. issues. Yeah. yeah. And the, the, the one thing that, that has been consistent with all the gangster criminal type interviews that I've ever done, and I remember I mentioned this a lot of times, it was always true. There's always a ratio of for every year that you ball out in the street doing illegal shit, you will do about five years in prison. Ooh. for every year. So if you ball out for five years, be prepared to do 25. That's right. Really? And, and those numbers are yeah. so close to wow. reality every time over and over again. And that's what gets discussed at the end. So there's never a like, I want to be the next freeway Ricky. Like, nah. Because like, his run was short. His run where he was actually balling was short. So he went to jail for mad long. Exactly. No, that's real. Exactly. That's real. It's not a, it's not a good ratio to be Does in. Does everybody get caught up? Like, is there anybody who makes it out of the streets either alive or without going to jail? I mean, I've, I've interviewed, I mean, like, ever going to jail or ever getting shot? Like, yeah. probably not. I mean, th those people you probably have never heard of, right? right. Th those stories are not told. Those are people that are in the shadows that, you don't they know. They got away clean and they got good. away clean and they're not talking about it. And that's why yeah. they got away clean. Like, like, there's an actual, like, real financer of death row who just got out of prison not too long ago. Harry O? Not Harry O. Not Harry O. There was a guy who put up the money for Harry O. Oh, wow. oh, Harry wow. O was so, almost like the face of the money, but there was a guy that was sort of a bigger D-boy that was in the mix who went to jail and got out, and he's not talking to nobody because, you see what I'm saying? That's like, like the, the, there, the, there, There's yeah. much, the, the, you know, the people who put themselves out there and so forth are not always the ones that really are doing it at the very highest levels. Uh, They're just the ones that happen to get caught. And that's the other reason when it comes to like rappers or artists or anybody, when you put them in front of a camera, I don't even believe 90% of the wild shit they say. So now, it's just like, yeah. I don't even have the wherewithal to take that out. It, it's different now because I'm realizing like, oh, these motherfuckers really be doing something. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? But back then it's just like, oh, he's just talking. Yo, how much of your hate do you think comes from financial success? Like, if you fronted like you were broke, I don't know if people are going to hate you, but maybe they see you got the cars, you have watches, you, you give them financial advice, they're starting to go, oh, I don't like that this guy's so wealthy. Now give me a reason why I should justify it. There's a, there's a jealousy that kicks in. 100%. You could always tell when someone has that issue because they'll bring up your money in a conversation that has nothing to do with you. Uh, <laughs> for example. For it example. just come out of the blue. What the fuck? Like, what does... Yeah. We, we're, we're talking about something completely different. Vlad's Suddenly. the police. Also, how many cars does he need? <laughs> right? <laughs> that's that's kind just of... like that. Yeah. And Ali Chapa said that. What did he say? He said something like, oh, you make all this money off the black community, you don't really fuck with us. Well, what mm -hmm. does that even mean? Like, I'm not the one claiming to cure cancer for y'all. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. With, with, with fake herbs. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, like you, you could take that a bunch of different ways. Like, you got to dress like Adam Sandler, bro. Yeah. That's if the, that's if the you, trick. I mean, like, like, <laughs> not because for, like, Adam Sandler's probably worth a bill. I'm dressing like Adam Sandler and hitting gems right now. This is, this yeah, is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm saying the actor, yeah, yeah. At, like, in. You might in, think you're talking about no jumper. <laughs> No, that's Adam they, Twain. I know they, but they and people are crazy, man. They, You're right. You know what I'm saying? All I'm trying to say is like he 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 plays, and that's probably just how he likes he to dress. Plays, yeah. But like he appeals to the everyday man, even yeah. though he's a billionaire, because he's a billionaire? or he's probably worth like half, yeah, maybe to a, to a bill. Like he's 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 yeah, it's crazy. So 
Yeah, I just I wonder if that reduces any sort of animosity towards Adam. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure it would to a certain degree. And if you really look, like, yeah, I mean, I wear nice clothes. Well, number one, I don't do very many interviews, right? When yeah, I, do, I have to look how I, you know, I have to look nice in the interviews. Like, you know, I don't dress like this when I'm going to the grocery store. But, but if you look, if you if you really pay attention to who I am, you've never seen a picture of my house. Yeah, you've never seen a picture of any of my cars. Yeah. Um, you never see like like my watch collection or you yeah. know what I mean or yeah. all my chains or whatever like that's actually kept completely off the record yeah you, you know what I'm saying that, that's kept private um, you know I don't talk about my family or show pictures of my family or whatever else it's like yo like you know whatever you're seeing is just based on assumptions mm. you know what I mean mm. like I don't you know what I mean you know like I remember Game just did an interview where they were talking about how he posted 13 million in his bank account like I would I wouldn't even consider doing that. I wonder if not showing your family hurts you. Maybe, maybe Seeing not. somebody with a family and children and like in a loving relationship. And again, like I, I don't really show that, you know, I don't show my wife really that much. I know Charlemagne doesn't really either, but nope. there's, there is something about seeing a human being in an incredibly human situation mm -hmm. where they're like loving and like vulnerable. Like I even, I even I sorry to interrupt, but like even gang members see you walking with a kid. And if you're like the ops, they sometimes it's like, yo, you no, got lucky. No, no, not yeah. these 2022 yeah. games. You, you see this new shit? They, well, they threw, threw the like kid a baby in the, in the fucking garbage. garbage, bro. The fuck? Fuck those dudes, man. What do you mean they threw the baby in the garbage? Yeah. Like, a dude was they're, walking they're, with they're, his they're, kid. Yeah, dudes, I think, was it Chicago? I thought it was here. I thought it was, maybe it was Chicago. Maybe, maybe it was New York. Yeah, I don't know. But literally, they're, they're trying to get some dude. They couldn't get a hold of him. So they threw his fucking. How'd they get his baby? Two month, two year old baby in the fucking garbage. Like, he was running with the baby in the stroller. I guess they got him. They got the baby. They put the baby they in a garbage the can. No, no, I don't think, I don't think they, they killed. Think they got See, it. You got to call Putin then. <laughs> I need nukes now. I'm serious. The whole block got to go, bro. Like, no, man. Come on, man. You throw a two-month food in the, the trash can? No, no, no. I think it was not that it makes a difference, but it was like maybe three or something like that. <laughs> Shut up, man. Five or some <laughs> shit, right? Like, not, I mean, Is that not a good enough reason to snitch? Yeah, you should snitch, You got to go man. tell on everybody. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. especially if you ain't going to do nothing. Yeah. If you personally aren't going to say, you know what, I'm going to go handle this myself, call yeah. the police. Please. Yeah. Well, I believe in snitching. I believe in calling the police. <laughs> I love the police. I'm happy you're here. I, <laughs> I, it makes me feel comfortable. I love it. I love it. I, I want you to be around this <laughs> Let's pay some bills, oh, man. Oh, shit. Let's pay some bills and come back. And I want to talk to Vlad about what he posted earlier. And I want to ask y'all, uh, mm -hmm. what would it take for you to be a prison wife? Um. <laughs> Uh, salute to BET, man. <laughs> BET's Martin Reunion is a streaming. It's streaming exclusively on BET Plus, man. I cannot wait to watch that Martin Reunion, a BET Plus original series for the first time in 30 years. One of TV's most iconic cast is back together, an event to celebrate, a legacy to cherish, a reunion to remember. Martin, Gina, Pam, Cole, with a special tribute to the beloved Tommy McKell for, man. God bless the dead. A reunion like any other where they relive all their favorite moments, share stories, reveal secrets, and celebrate with big laughs. Reminisce with all your favorite characters, all your favorite catchphrases, all your favorite disses and kisses. They got special guests, musical performances. Uh, Martin, man, come on. If you're from a certain era, I shouldn't even have to sell this to you. It's Martin the Reunion, a BET Plus original special, now streaming exclusively on BET Plus. You want to screen black culture, visit BET Plus dot plus to learn more. I'm going to be honest with you. Salute to BET Plus. I'm glad BET Plus is doing this. This should be on every Viacom channel. Okay. This shouldn't be something that you got to watch on the streaming service. Okay. Cool. It, it, it should be something that yeah. premieres on linear and then we can go watch it on the streaming service later. This is Martin we're talking about. Yeah. Like, they rerun Martin on every freaking Viacom channel there is. And, yep. like, Martin is just one of those shows where culturally, black, white, Puerto Rican, Jewish, it don't matter. If, you grew, up, if you grew up in a certain era, that's, That's your shit. That's it. We all bond. We can bond over Martin episodes. Yeah. Bro. It was it was a cool time in content where everybody watched the show at the same time and yes. had the discussion about it the next day <laughs> at the same time. Yes. And uh, there are a few shows that made people do that. I think I remember even like back in high school, it was like wrestling that made you do that. <laughs> yes. But that, even that, even that didn't have like the broad, broad audience. Chappelle's show definitely was like Chappelle's show. Chappelle's definitely show, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. And it wrestling was had a very large audience though. Yeah. But I don't know if it was br as broad as like a, a Martin. Yeah. Sopranos had that effect. Sopranos, like there there were a yep. few shows. Game but, of Thrones. Dude, Game of Thrones. Even, that's the craziest thing about Game of Thrones is even now, 
It has that effect. Mm-hmm. I never watched it, but I know that it's massive. I'm jealous that you get to experience right. it. Right, me too. Like, me too. I want yep. to experience what you're about to experience. Yeah, I'm not Back. watching it. Why not? Boo. I don't got time. I would love to. I will one day, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Yo, confession. Like, why would you not Listen, watch? I'm, I'm just, I'm just like so. Marvel, but you're not gonna I love Marvel. Movie. Yeah. I have another confession. Yeah. Never seen The Wire, bro. Yo, you That's cracker. Another great one. <laughs> <laughs> you cracker ass cracker, bro. <laughs> How the fuck have you not seen The seen Wire, the dog? I own, I own the whole box set on DVD and never seen The Wire. You have a DVD player? Well, I mean, I, I had I had it from back in the day. <laughs> yeah, that's why he hasn't seen it. He got, he got to buy a DVD player. And see that shit. <laughs> Just waiting on my DVD player to come around. Yo, um, <laughs> they get an Xbox One. You know what I mean? Like, yo, I never seen the Y. Yo. Bro, um, how? I what do you know. watch? You I watch really everything. Think, I know. I, I, I watched the Oz. I watched True Blood. I watched The Sopranos. I never watched the Y. I don't know why. I have no, re- I have no idea now. why I've never watched the Y. Great mm. series, but I will. Yep. Um, you watch Oz and True Blood, huh? Same thing. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Do you think the Y doesn't have enough like gay sex scenes in it or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> Not gay enough. Is that, is that what you're worried about, bro? <laughs> We gotta do the other half. <laughs> Not enough gay sex scenes in, in Hawaii for me. This next, Omar was gay though. Yeah, say what? Wasn't well, Omar gay? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Did, oh, so there you go. There, there were no sex scenes though. No, nah, there, um, there was one. I must have with the Puerto Rican guy, his boyfriend. Yeah, right. Oh, who got killed? Come on now. I'm messing up. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Remember they go to Puerto like Rico that? and like him and his dude. It's been a while. Yeah, it's you didn't. You didn't. You know, sit down with the lotion for that one. <laughs> no, I did not. No. <laughs> <laughs> get, get the lotion in the bathroom for that scene. <laughs> nice and full. You know what I mean? You can check the level. <laughs> Season five, it heats up. That's all I'm trying watch, to say about watch. the why. Um, okay, listen, guys. This episode is also brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website, engage your audience, and sell anything, your products, content you create, and even more. I'm telling you, you do not have a business if you do not have a website for it. You need a place on the internet for your business nowadays. Squarespace makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and uh, expertise in a way that fits their brand, okay? With member areas, you can unlock a new revenue stream for your business free of time in your schedule by selling access to gated content like videos, online courses, or newsletters. Create pro-level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story, grow your audience, and drive sales. Stand out in any inbox with Squarespace email campaigns. Collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. Start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like site colors and logos. Built-in analytics measures the impact of every send. Use those analytics and insights to grow your business. Learn where your site visits are from and the sales are from and analyze which channels are the most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords or most popular products and content. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot with the offer code idiot for 10% off your first purchase. Now let's get back to the show. The announcements are a very important part of what we do in church. We got church announcements. Uh, Now, Vlad, this is the part of the show where we uh, shout out anything that we got to promote, market, anything coming up. What you got, Schultz? Um... I, I got an announcement next week. You said that for <laughs> <about> three weeks. <laughs> this is like Charles. Two book. weeks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this is, yeah. This is, what was that book about the mermaid? State of Emergency, Tamika Mallory. No, State, yeah, State of Emergency. Uh, no, in, in, uh, I'll have an announcement when I'm back from, um, when I'm back from my honeymoon. We'll definitely have a nice, fun announcement when I'm back from my honeymoon. But uh, Alex Media's got a new studio in LA. I That's see an announcement. WTF has expanded. That's right. Hollywood. In Hollywood, California, WTF, Wheezy and Alex got a new studio out there, so go get that. Thank you, guys. I don't, I don't agree with it. 
Talk to me. Just en- you just encouraging more people to do podcasts they don't need to be doing. Sean, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> this guy, bro. this guy is. God, I respect, unbelievable, I, I respect bro. entrepreneurship. Unbelievable. I love the entrepreneurship. You, well, you should have said this. You should have said, you know, we're going out of business. And then Charlotte said, it's because you didn't open up a studio in LA. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real reason why you're going out of business. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if you are if you are a podcaster who uh, has a successful podcast and you're looking for a great place to podcast, WTF Media Studios in LA is your spot. Damn right. If you're a new up and coming podcaster who's thinking about starting a podcast, you can't afford them. So that means don't even start the podcast. That's not true. Go get a job. That's not okay. True. Go get a job. <laughs> Go get a job so you can afford them. Yeah. Go get a job. Hmm. Vlad, you got any church announcements? Uh, well, the the Vlad TV YouTube membership which I think that not everyone's uh, familiar with, but essentially, you know, the way we release our interviews is that we drop them clip by clip, and then at the very end, we drop the full interview. But if you want to skip the line, you get a Vlad TV YouTube membership for four ninety nine a month, and you get the full interview ad-free on the same day as the first, the first clip. Mm. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, like, for example, like, you know, we got the same with the Bull interview that's going to drop uh, next week. It's like two and a half hours. You know, by the time the full interview comes out, it might be like a month and a half <laughs> yeah. and so forth. So if you want to watch the whole thing on day one, uh, you know, get a Vlad TV to membership. You know, everyone who gets it said it's the best four ninety nine they've ever spent. So people, are people subscribing to it? Thousands and thousands and thousands of people. It's wow. Like, yeah. I mean, I just wonder because like when people are used to getting something for free, you know what I mean? To get them to pay for it is always a, a challenge. Right. Well, it, a lot of times what I've noticed is that it really depends on the interview itself. So, for example, mm-hmm. when we just had Tony Ayo, I didn't realize how many G Unit fans there really Amazing were, interview. like in terms of worldwide. So it was like we had our biggest month. I think our, our membership grew by like twenty five percent last wow. month. Wow! This is after being up for a year and, and having a big membership already, it grew by twenty five percent. So many people wanted to see the Tony Ayo interview, but we were also running the Iman Shumpert interview. There was a Boosie interview. There was mm-hmm. TK Kirkland. You know, I mean, a lot of a lot of you know Gilbert Arenas, like mm-hmm. a lot of the heavy hitters that we have on the show. But yeah, uh, so if you want to, you know, because that was always the big complaint. It was like, drop the full interview, drop the full interview, drop the full interview. It's like, here's the full interview, four ninety nine a month. So I think another thing people don't realize you 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 pay too. Yeah, no, we started you know a couple of years ago. We just realized that it was going to be hard to grow the business based on people doing it for free all the time. Now, certain people, you know, what I mean, like we're, we're cool with it, but if we wanted certain types of guests we were going to have to really cut, start cutting checks. Mm-hmm. And that really changed the whole business model. Suddenly we started having access to people that otherwise we wouldn't have had access to. Like Sammy the Bull's not out there doing free interviews. Yeah, You see what I'm yeah. saying? So we had to cut a, a large check to Sammy the Bull, but we got an interview and, you know, literally for two years we've been talking to him about it. And it was like, we want to do the interview we wanted to do. That he didn't, you know, he didn't really want to do the type of interview, but it was like, we wanted the interview we want to do and we finally agreed on a price and a date to do it. But like, how yeah, much? I mean, all of our regular guests get paid. The people that you see on Vlad TV over and over again, you know what I mean? Like, like whether it's T.K. Kirkland, or the Marinas, or the Boosies, especially, um, you know, whoever, they are actually getting paid to, to, to do interviews every time. And, and that, to me, I feel is sort of changing the, the, the space of it. Because, listen, we're, we're all making money off these interviews. So why, why would we not share, you know, the interview, you know, share some of that revenue, you know, with the person who's doing it. Now, not everyone's going to get paid. At the end of the day, it's like, you know, if little baby wants to, you know, if you, you know, if little baby wants you to do a verse, are you going to charge him? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you could technically, yeah. but the opportunity of being on a little baby song is that. And so we do not pay for everybody, but for a lot of people, we do. Yeah, There's a lot of artists that think Breakfast Club pays for interviews. I don't know where y'all got, well, I know where y'all got it from. There was one artist in particular who said that happened, but that was a lie. Who said that? I'm not hmm. gonna say. How much does the Sammy the Bull interview cost? I'm not gonna say. Like a thousand dollars? A bit more than that. <laughs> a bit more than that. <laughs> like, paid him in Bitcoin. A hundred thousand? <laughs> not that much. Okay. We have a range. Somewhere between. You have, nine, <laughs> you have, you have ninety-nine thousand dollars to play around with. This is how you find out how old women are. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> you won our hundred. Yeah, you know, you like, well, you, you look like you're twenty five. She's like, What? There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> you're so you're so adorable thanks for saying that and then you go way high and then she's like no way I'm not 45 and then boom so 50,000 for the Sammy the Bull no comment hit it uh, that's no a comment. good amount of money no comment but, it, but it's actually not that amount oh really yeah, okay, yeah. No now problem. do you ask for exclusivity on that person uh no never well, that's a good never, deal never, never ever um 
I mean, sometimes we'll ask like, hey, listen, can you, before doing, you know, let's just say as a person that's about to do a lot of interviews, we'll say, you know, especially for, if it's a financial transaction, we'll say, hey, listen, can you wait until this interview drops before doing other interviews? But yeah, ultimately, that's more, but ultimately, yeah, that's more what I meant. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. ultimately they could also say no. And, and it is what it, it is. It is what it is. You just got to be confident yeah. that your interview is the best. Right. And, and like one thing that like, you know, sometimes people have come to me like, you know, I remember I interviewed uh, Here's the Christ. He was like this DC uh, drug kingpin. He was, he hit me up and he was like, hey, um, can I still do documentaries or movies about my life? Like, do you own my life rights? And I'm like, no, not, not in the least. Jesus Christ. Like, at, at all. Like, you know what I mean? Like all I own is what we filmed that day you could go out and do the same interview right. 20 more times right if that's what you want you could do i mean i think the michelle a tv movie was was based on our interview wow i think, I think that's what she had mentioned to me at one point so it's like a lot of stuff that what we do since in a documentary format will get turned into bigger projects later on that's i want i want to see china max story turn into a film but we, we, we talked about that absolutely right? Food you know, to china I'm waiting max. on you on that he's crushing it right now you think <clears throat> really yeah. china mac yeah we, we gave him his first interview Really, His first ever interview out of prison. No, he's crushing he it right now. The tooth. Yeah, he has know. this. Uh, he has this like Mac Eats show. He's yeah. doing like a we, we a have a Mac show. Eats. We have a Mac Eats on Vlad TV, which we haven't run yet. Oh, really? Yeah. But yeah, he's like traveling all around. He's really yeah. utilizing YouTube almost as like uh, his his way to interface with fans in general. Like putting out a message, he'll put it out on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Usually, people use like Instagram for that. But he's cultivated like a cool audience doing show. Yeah, I really like what 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 uh, China Mac's doing because I know when we had him on. He was talking about rapping, but he was like, I also see myself doing other things outside of rap. Yeah. And and it looks like he's doing it, man. Yeah. Another right. another regular guest on Vlad TV who gets paid to do interviews. There you we go. You know what I'm saying? Like another another person that we helped out. And that's the one thing that sort of annoys me sometimes is that people don't mention the people that we've helped out along the way. Like, for example, you signed the Gangster Chronicles. Yeah. Right? And... Luther Steel, Norm. Yeah. MCA. And... and um, Mob James really got a start on Vlad TV. That's what led to him actually doing a podcast. And, and Salute to Mob James. Yep. Yeah, you know, and ultimately doing stuff like that. Like, um, you know, we we try to help people's careers and, and sometimes even jumpstart their careers like a China Mac, you know, yep. or a Mob James. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it'd be nice to think I mentioned every so often, but eh, it is yeah. what it is. Hey, listen, my, uh, my church announcement is uh, salute to everybody who came out to the Tribeca Film Festival. Uh, to watch the movie 88 uh, that I executive produced. Um, the Saturday night show was sold out. Uh, but well, we got a show. Well, we got a show that well, we're recording this on Tuesday. So we got a show tonight at nine o'clock. But the next show is Saturday, June 18th, 2.15 p.m. Theater number six. Go to Tribeca Film Festival uh, dot com. I think there's still tickets available for that show. Um, this Saturday, June 18th, 2.15 p.m. Go see the movie uh, 88 that I executive produced, starred my man Brandon V. Dixon and Notori Naughton. And um, yeah, this is a good weekend to go see it. This weekend is going to be, it's going to be what, Black Gay Father's Day? Black Gay Father's Weekend? <laughs> what? That's a thing? Well, it's, I, I'm combining it because it's three different holidays in one. So <laughs> Sunday is Juneteenth. <laughs> Right? So it's a celebration of blackness. Okay. Mm -hmm. Plus it's going to be Father's Day. Mm -hmm. And it's Pride Month. Why don't we just call it Atlanta Day? <laughs> Atlanta Day. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a good it's idea? Black Can Father. we just black game I'm combine all three? That. I'm not touching that. <laughs> I'm just saying this is a good weekend. Completely on your own. <laughs> black Gay Father's Day. Go see 88. Okay. Take, yeah. take your Take your black gay father to go see 88 <laughs> yeah. this weekend at the Tribeca Film Festival. Let's do it. This is a good weekend for black gay fathers, bro. That Sunday? Yes, Sunday dude. I've been be waiting for, for this day. <laughs> 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 I've been waiting for a you know, time where we can finally celebrate black gay fathers. There's not enough celebration of black gay fathers. Well, this Sunday is our day. Okay? Now. It's, it's, it's yours. It's your day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm black, bro. And, but what about the other ones? Well, you're I'm a black gay, father, but, but you're not gay. I feel like humans were all encompassing. <laughs> so I am what you am. I am what he is. I am what Alex is. I am what Taylor is. You so know what I mean? You're a little gay. I mean, I think we all are. <laughs> you think we're a little gay? Ain't no wrong with being a little gay. Yeah. That's... Okay, then. You played with your dick. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> hey. Yo, it is interesting. Like, your, like yes. your shit ain't gay. But then there's a limit. Like jerking off, we've decided that's not gay. But if you, <laughs> right? Like but another man's as, hand. But another man's hand. But when I gets crazier, it, jerking off is not gay. But if you finger your butthole, that's 
Yo, yo, <laughs> yo. That's, that's that we would think is gay, right? Finger in your own butthole. That being said, <laughs> jerking off, not gay at all. Straight, even. I don't even want. I don't even want to say that's gay. But in your it, own butthole. that's wh- who decides. Who decides? I feel like it's something bigger than gay. <laughs> go, go. What's beyond gay? I don't know what's beyond. <laughs> what's gay. beyond gay? What is beyond gay? That's a good question. I don't know. What, what? is beyond gay? Finger in, Finger in your butthole. Finger in your butthole. Your butthole is beyond gay, right? Yeah. Isn't yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. What is it? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not that's on not this even beyond gay. That's impossible gay. Impossible gay? Yeah, impossible. But 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 jerking yourself off is not gay. What about jerking yourself off and fingering your butthole? At the same time. It kind of screams gay to me. It kind of screams you it, should be getting paid for that. Come on. That's an amazing thing to be able to do. Jerk off and finger your own butthole. You know See the, what you, you admit the, when Vlad's you know in the, the room? Core balance you have to have. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm serious. Core you're not, balance. You know how strong your core has to be to <laughs> keep yourself Yeah, up to like, doing that? to be pulling and, it, yo, that's one of those things, you know, you can't like uh, pat your head and rub your stomach? Yes. If you can finger your butthole and jerk off. If you can do that, email us, I man. I did it. I bet you did, Vlad. <laughs> I bet you did. You say I got skills in other areas, too. I'm just right, saying. I see you're, going I see, you're missing out, dude. I see the road that I'm about to walk down. How'd right. you get that scar on your finger? There was some popping in line. Vlad. I can tell you. Wait, wait, but well, I was alluding to the the oh, thing we were talking about. That, nothing nothing to, do to do with, do with that. that. Okay, and, and, okay. And, I'm just, you know, you never know. I see no scar. What's scar? Finger right here. The pointer finger. Bro, you got good fucking observation. So I'm out here. I'm watching the room. You know what I'm saying? I got to make sure he's not, you know, bugging I, our phones and shit for fucking Putin. This guy. Yeah. What's the what's the story? Uh, I remember. I, I mean, it was wasn't a great story. I was like, I was training to be a boxer. Not not like not, not like training to be a boxer, but like taking boxing lessons at yeah. the time. And I was in my house practicing punches. And I ended up punching a door frame on accident. Hey. Oh. Yeah. That's but you awesome. cut yourself with a meat cleaver when you was doing the. Butcher, Vinny, yeah, yeah, Vlad the butcher promo. Nope. Okay, this we're is not gonna one. give. We're not gonna. We're not gonna give that anything. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> Keep digging your grave. <laughs> Listen, we shoot on this podcast. That's a fact, okay, man. we that didn't say we fact. hit. We're Steph Curry went zero for nine yesterday. He's still gonna win Finals MVP. Wait, did he win really for nine? He zero for nine at three pointers yesterday. Warriors no way. Six. Warriors and in they six. still got the dub. Warriors in yeah, six, yeah, baby. They cleaning that up. They cleaning Warriors in six. Okay, listen, um, DJ Vlad posted this. For all the young guys out there who think that prison isn't that bad. This is from Aaron Cox. Former 32 months as state property at Pennsylvania Department of Corrections. I guess the question was, what is it like to be turned out in prison? And I'm going to read this whole thing because I need everybody's answer on this. In my mid-20s, I was young and stupid. Thought I was a tough guy and was hustling. Ended up getting pulled over with a loaded gun and two ounces of powder and got sent to a state prison for 32 months. It's 32 months. So that's like what? Three years almost? Two, two and a half years almost, right? In order to survive in there, I basically had to become someone's prison wife, as they call it. I was young, slim, good looking, and completely inexperienced in doing time. My celly was solid muscle. So he started taking advantage of me. What can I say? It was awful in the beginning, but I got used to it. I now know that it could have been a whole lot worse for me, so I'm not bitter. At least he treated me pretty good. Never hit me or nothing like that, and he never shared me with he never shared me with no one. Thankfully, like I seen happen to some of the other guys who got turned out in there, I am well aware that there's gonna be people on here who are gonna clown me and point fingers. I don't really give a fuck. What happened to me happens to a lot of men in lockup. I'm just one of the few who has the heart to admit it. They even have a name now for the type of situations like I was in. It's called protective parent. Like I said, it happens to lots of men. For some of the guys in there who aren't as strong, becoming a punk is the only way to guarantee your safety. Because in return for giving up the booty, you get protection. I'm now 31 years old, have a beautiful girlfriend, and moving on. Although my experience in prison will stay with me for the rest of my life. Thoughts? Protective pairing. Protective pairing. That's I remember wild. a girl responded. She goes, like, shit, because of inflation, I'm protective pairing right now. Hilarious. <laughs> 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 fucking hilarious. Now, nah, that's crazy, man. Wow. I, I don't know about all he that. He was just talking about what's gay. That's gay. That's gay. But yep. it's gay for survival. Yeah, but it's just, yeah, I think that's... So is gay a mindset gay. or an action? Well, I don't think he's gay. Well, no, I think he is gay. But... No, is gay a mindset or an action? No, gay is a mindset. Like, doing something gay because you have to doesn't make you gay. Right? But... Uh, it's, well, he was, he was, he's a rape victim. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, he's what a he is. If that yes. happened, I don't I don't believe this to be real at all. Like that. You that's don't think a, so? That's a, no, it's cap. Nobody would ever admit that. No, I have a girlfriend now, but I'm good. Well, he didn't like, say his real name. He said it was, it was Aaron Cox. But he took this fake. Which he probably got in prison. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't say his name. He didn't say his <laughs> did you ever, did you ever, This uh, is fake, bro. <laughs> nobody would admit this. Uh, okay. Okay. Let me, let me tell you. Anom- this. Anonymously? Did you but guys, why? Okay. Joe Rogan played this clip on his show. Yeah. You know, I watched it. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Rico Reckless. Yeah. From Flat TV. I saw that before. In, in Cook County Jail yeah. in Chicago. They spit on your butthole or something? They spit in your butthole. They, they knock you out and spit in your butthole. Okay. You think that's fake? Uh, you no. think you think both these guys are just making up the story just for fun? Well, no, there's two different things going on here. Like he's admitting that he was sucking dicks or fucking this guy. They're saying that other people are abusing. I think it's very rare that the victim just comes out and be like, "Yo, this is what it was," and actually wasn't that bad. He treated me pretty good. Like, but I think it's for, it's a form of therapy. Like that's yeah. something you got to get off your chest. Tell your right? therapist, bro. Tell, <laughs> tell your therapist, bro. Don't tell that to Facebook. You, you know, but you want to like, warn people. I, I think what he's doing. Those are the kind of stories that keep people out of jail. Yeah, oh, I, I really believe that. Kept that's me out of jail. I mean, <laughs> so no, that's that, it. I watched the American shit. Me. No, seriously, in high school, I watched oh, American, American Me and, and said, wild. "Jail's not for me." That's it. I yeah. made a decision Conscious for the decision. rest of my yeah, life yeah, yeah. to say once I saw the, the rape scene with the Mexican mafia yeah. and the, the Italian mafia yeah. dude I said not for me yeah, yeah. yeah. you know what I mean those and, are and, the beyond those are beyond scared straight stories right. those are the stories that you tell that really keep kids out of prison I right. think so anyway yeah you know what I mean because it's, it's just I don't know if it's because of social media and you see people in prison and they dancing and they like <laughs> they got food and everything looks all peaches and cream it's like no it's prison bro yeah. it's going down in there like you're gonna yeah. have to fight Every day of your life to stay alive. Who wants that? <laughs> and this dude only did 32 months. God damn, bro. 32. Think about that. 32 months. One decision cost him 32 months of his freedom and he got violated in prison. Ooh. He actually needs therapy. Yeah. This is a cry for help, if you ask me. He, he's helping other people by telling his story, but he actually needs therapy. There's no mm-hmm. way in hell he has a healthy relationship with his girlfriend. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah, like remember in American Me when he got out and he tried to get with the girl and he was trying to butt fuck her and she was like, ah, you don't remember that part? No. <laughs> Y'all remember that part? You remember, remember that part, I remember but that you don't part. remember the Omar shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was with a man and a woman. You're talking about with two men. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess. See? So. See? What did, they, what did they do after they spit in your butthole? I forgot that part. Well, what, right. what happens is, is that once you have uh, human anything, human saliva or a human bodily fluid inside of you, it's considered rape. So then they have to go and administer a rape kit and have to notify your family that you've been raped in prison. Man, no, oh. man. So this is how they rape without the raping. Fuck. They're raping without raping, bro. Raping without raping. I'm, let, me, let me tell you this. When I played this for, you know, you just mentioned China Mac. Jesus. Right? You yeah. mentioned China Mac. He yeah. said, well, because I haven't seen that. But what I did see is like, okay, when dudes in prison, they hide things in their trunk. Yeah. Right? Which is their ass. But yeah. Boofing. Right? Boofing. Boofing. Right? Yeah. So what he has seen is a dude will boof some drugs and word will get out. He's got some drugs in his ass. So he's seen dudes <laughs> knock the guy out, Yo. reach in his ass, no, pull out whatever he had in his ass, no. and then go hang out with their friends and smoke, open it up, <laughs> and then go smoke or shoot up whatever the hell they just pulled out of this man's yeah, ass. Imagine doing that as a prank and this dude don't got nothing in nothing, his ass. Nothing. Just an empty bag that says, fuck you. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> what if you don't got nothing Yo. and you just keep digging and digging? Yo, like you, just, you, like, know, yo, I know you they say you got it in here, You bro. take it out and the bag is just a paper that goes, hey, yo. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> 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 yo, yo, why are you reaching in people's asses though? <laughs> hey. Dirty motherfucker. Yeah. Prison is n- prison is not where y'all want to be. Pause. Kid. That's God all it is. Just damn, pause. The whole other world. This is what I'm saying. Jesus Christ. Hey, salute to uh quint- quint- quintential gentleman. Um, I'm on, what? I'm on Did I not pronounce that right? <laughs> Oh, I didn't even see the oh, word. Oh, no, I'm bugging. Quintessential. He, quintessential, yeah. <laughs> Yo, this guy is crazy, bro. This Luther, guy is... Luther quintessential gentleman. This I'm guy <laughs> is a multi, multi-millionaire, <laughs> business owner, genius communicator, like for a living. Has, but I just can't pronounce He's an author, words. bro. He's an author. Listen... We all fall short. Yeah. If it's more than three syllables, it ain't getting out. <laughs> 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 
It's unbelievable. Just a genius. He saw quintessential and didn't even fucking try, bro. <laughs> he didn't even fucking try. Go, go. Now just salute to them. Um, because <laughs> I'm on the cover of the magazine. Go. The Fucking go! It gets better. Wait, it gets better. He's on the cover. I'm on the cover. He's on the cover. <laughs> he doesn't know. God. I can't. Bl- I can't wait till he's on the cover of Vogue. He's like, I'm on Vogue Val. way. Yeah. Val. Vogue you. So do Vogue you. Vogue you. Oh man! The but uh, go check that out. Go, go. We're going. We're going. We're safe. The goat. It's the goat. Oh, they did the whole man. photo shoot. Everything. No clue what the fuck. The magazine was. Oh, no, I do know the magazine. They did a nice article, and it was a nice. <laughs> did that? Photo shoot. You did know what's that? so crazy? That's what when I was in Brooklyn. I was in Brooklyn shooting that. Yeah, right? and this guy's unbelievable. If you look at Yo, the pictures, shout out to Quintuplet. <laughs> shout out to <laughs> Quincy, Quincy Jones. Brunson. Shout out to Quincy Brunson Jones. Magazine. Shout out to Quincy. Kunta Kinte. <laughs> shout out to. <laughs> Shout out <laughs> Oh man If you go look at the pictures right Yeah that's what you look at No, they, definitely not they, reading the mother <laughs> <laughs> The pictures are like model S Right Ooh. Right It's the way he had me posing and stuff like that Yeah And that's when I was in Brooklyn And one of them young boys was walking down the street Nah Look right? God damn bro That's too, that is, that's a little too much Nah you looking up. handsome dude That's what I keep hearing bro. I'm trying to pair up That's what I keep hearing but listen, I'm trying to protect the pair. <laughs> Look, the dude in Brooklyn, I'm, the dude was walking by, the dude goes, Yo, Charlemagne, word to my dad? You giving sexy, my boy? <laughs> I was like, what? The hood's getting progressive, bro. Like, Damn, Charla! This is great, <laughs> man. You looking real Mouse Joes right now. So. Hey, hey, I, bro. I was there to salute the mouse. <laughs> I'm gonna give myself an AO. Word to my word to my dad. I got an AO myself. Word to my dad. I got an AO myself. Word to my dad. You looking ass. sexy, my boy. Yo, w- yeah, word to he my dad. You giving sexy. Yo, you giving sexy, bro. You giving sexy, my boy. Yo, you giving sexy. Keep going. We got another one. God damn, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, salute to Q Magazine, man. <laughs> Q Magazine. <laughs> 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 salute to, to, to Q Gentleman Magazine. Q Gentleman Magazine. I appreciate y'all, man. Thank you, man. I'm done. I'm done. Thank I'm you. Done. I'm thank you. Thank you. Vlad. <laughs> Vlad, thank you for coming, man. Of course, man. I appreciate course. you. Of course. This Vlad is my here. guy. You know. Weezy. Oh, we sorry, 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 sorry. Why are we getting kicked out? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Vlad is my guy, man. Vlad yeah. been my friend for a long time. Yes, we cancers. We his birthday is the day before mine. We yeah. celebrated many a B day party together, and I appreciate Vlad. You got anything? VladTV.com, all that good stuff. Yeah, VladTV.com. Check yeah, out YouTube. the membership on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, YouTube.com yes. slash VladTV. VladTV on Instagram. And Sammy the Twitter. Bull coming. What are the other big ones you said do you had? Ooh, Sammy the uh, Bull. I mean, Warren. Warren Sapp is dropping today. Warren. Um. Michael Franzese is back. He's he's uh he's yeah, dropping yeah, yeah. uh next week as well. Um and we're we're working on some stuff. Okay. You know cool. what I mean? Like cool, usually, cool. I don't like to announce stuff until I actually film it. Yeah. But but Sammy's been filmed, uh Michael's been filmed, and we have I mean, we're actually the first time in our fifteen year history, like we are so backed up. Like we're literally have clips scheduled into August. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like wow. we I'm not interviewing as much as I, I usually am because I just need to let these things to kind of clear up a little bit. That's great. There's just so much content. Um, but yeah, it's good. It's a good problem to have. It's a good great problem man. to have. Schultz, that's it? Yes, sir. Right. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Thanks. Boom.